guys. This is Cleveland Moto Podcast number 350. 350. Uh, so 350, 350, it's a big deal around here. I mean, 350 is a number of great import for us in the world because I think that... Uh, was we our, never thought we'd get there. We ne- well, Yeah, we <laughs> never... Th- we didn't think we'd live this long. This is the Honda episode. And this is and this is exactly how we started, because we started this podcast by saying that we were of the opinion that the Honda CB350 was the perfect motorcycle. Yeah. That, that at that point in the world, in, in 1969, that they had built what would stand the test of time, as far as we were concerned, 11 years ago, and I guess we were right, because... Nobody's knocked it out of that position since that we were absolute fans of the Honda CB350. And to this day, I still am irrationally drawn to and will usually spend too much money on a CB350. And you you did a hell of a Motor Stories Halloween episode about... Yeah, cafe so, racers about cafe and racers and, people, and that whole thing because yeah. that's a big part of how we started. And our friends at uh, the Cafe Racer podcast, mm-hmm. who, you know, who got their start because of Cafe Racer magazine and that core, that sort of that what combination. What's the big dude's name? Sean or uh, Mike C. Mike C. Mike C. Mike C. Mike C. Yeah, Mike yeah, C. Yep. You'll know if you see him. Oh the, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it's hopefully uh, you're on his good side. <laughs> yeah. So with that Cafe Racer podcast, that you know, for us, Cafe Racer kind of put our shop. Well, it helped us financially is mm-hmm. the nicest way to put it. Um, it put a lot of stakes on a lot of tables, the words Cafe Racer, because Cleveland is very welcoming to the idea of a Cafe Racer. Oh, yeah. So I had I have an interesting story about that. So Mike Seat came in, and uh, I was getting into Street Fighters when a lot of people were getting into Cafe Racers. Mm-hmm. So I was all about the European magazine, Street Fighter magazine. So oh, I yeah. got myself a 1987 uh, GSXR 750, the oil cooled. Hell yeah! It was already wrecked, so all the plastic was off of it. Perfect. So I went from there and just <laughs> and went from there, and then I cut the subframe. I cut three inches out of the top part of the subframe, and then had a dude weld the things back so I could pull it up three inches that angled the tail up. Yeah. And then I bought um, a, a carbon fiber made tail from Ireland that took two and a half months to get to me, plus a nose and all this. And I did all this work and got it all together. And, and by the end of it, I was sick of looking at the thing because it took me like a year and a half to make it. So I sold it to my friend Tom, who his brother ran Jack Prince. So it's Tom D. Tomaso. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I sold him the bike and he spray painted it flat black. And then it was featured in fucking Cafe Racer of Magazine. Of course it was. As this the fucking minute it awesome wasn't yours. Build. Right, yeah, 100%. <laughs> and I spent so much goddamn time on that fucking bike. And then he got to love it and enjoy it, which I'm not mm-hmm. mad, whatever. I mean, at least it was loved, you know, whatever. But yeah, that was an interesting time because he had Cafe Racers. Yeah. He had fucking Street Fighters. Oh, yeah. He had Squiddies and everybody else. It was, it, it was a really fun time. And when we're looking back, 350 episodes of this podcast, yeah. the one thing that we've kind of always said is when we talk about, okay, we're going to talk about a motorcycle tuning segment. We're going to talk about some kind of motorcycle maintenance or anything. We do also, we always kind of gauge our language to uh, like using the CB350 as a base model. Sure. Now, this is an interesting thing because our friend Brian Schaffron, who does uh, Skidmark Garage, mm-hmm. he has created an entire program for children called MotoGo, yep. where they go out and they teach uh, motorcycle wrenching skills to children all over Cleveland, and schools can have them come out and do that at their, at their place. But their base unit, the bike that the kids build, mm-hmm. is always a CB350. Like, he has created a magnet that CB350s are drawn to. And it's funny because they've got this, they've amassed this collective knowledge. But what I love about it is they are making young kids, they're forcing them to learn about CB350s right. against their will. Yeah. So that's propagating it. It's like taking it forward. So those kids, when they're, you know, when those kids are 40 years old, 25 years I from now. I want to buy a CB350. Exactly. Like worked on. Keeps right. the market, right. Yeah. And I mean, it is cool because as as Dustin, you know, so Dustin Elliott, who helped start this podcast. Of course. Dustin Elliott had always said that, like, there's just nothing better than a CB350. That if you can work on a CB350, you can work on ultimately right. anything. Because all the bikes kind of draw their technological systems today kind of go back to CB350. You know what else was really yeah. interesting that I saw them do during COVID? I was following them on Facebook. And 
all my years of building models, I was like, there has to be some kind of knowledge that you're learning from this. And so I thought it was really interesting that Moto Go during the pandemic would send, um, I don't know if they were V8 models or motorcycle yes. engine models, yep. but they were models of a motor, yep. but they were accurate enough that they would send them to kids and they'd help build them. And they learned about all the parts just from yep. building this plastic model. So that model is called the visible V8. Yeah. That's so it, that yeah. particular model. And for our podcast listeners who weren't alive in the seventies mm-hmm. and didn't have boys <laughs> life magazine right. or mechanics illustrated or whatever, right. um, Playboy. You, Playboy. <laughs> um, if you weren't alive in that period of time, you might not have learned about the visible V8. And that's the visible V8 up on the screen behind us. Yeah, yeah. And the visible V8 is still available. So you can still buy these. And why these are important, why I think this is important, is this particular thing, these visible V8 motors, they go for around 100 bucks. Okay. But the idea, and this is a, a, a one to four scale. Okay, so this is a pretty big unit. It sits on a, it fills up your desktop pretty nicely. And if you build one of these, you will learn the way a crankshaft works. Right. You'll w- learn the way valves work. Like everything goes together appropriately. It just yep. doesn't have oil and stuff like that, exactly. but everything else yep. moves appropriately. And it has a crank on the end of the transmission right. where if you crank it, then all the pistons go up and down, the valves open and close. Yeah. So you get the whole... That's Chris Smith on the cover of the box right do you, there. Do you get the, you get the pipe? You do get a pipe. pipe yeah. Dad has a pipe. Yeah, that's exactly it. That is the nuclear family of the Where's 1950s. Where's Dad's hand? Yeah. That's the important thing. Yeah, that's, that is it, Johnny. We're going to teach you how to build a V8 motor. So that's a Make really smile. fun thing. And so what Brian was doing uh, was he was having a way that you could donate money to MotoGo and it would purchase... A, a visible V8 kit. Yep, 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 yep. And so you could support his program by, in situations where they don't have the ability to bring you an entire CB350 motorcycle to teach your shop class or whatever, these visible V8s are pretty small. They fit um, nicely, four or five of them in a cardboard box. I love that whole idea and everything, but I think they're jumping ahead a little too fast. You have to start out on a Briggs and Stratton. Well, you can't just go yeah. right to a CB350. <laughs> first, first you have to do you know like a little three horsepower right. four stroke, yeah. and then you got to take a little like, side valve motor. Then you got to yeah. work on your uh, lawn boy. So what you know was, what, what a two stroke two solo. Strokes. Yeah, you know, and then <laughs> I even <laughs> built a Wankel. I built. Well, that's what we I was had ask. A, and I've been trying to find one. What was what was the Honda Whisper's first foray into motor motor? fixing well it was uh, lawn mowers and stuff yeah. like okay that, small engines and stuff like and there's that. a shitload of those laying around lawn mower yeah. engines so don't they just suck them I mean, all up just, you know 80 I of mean, them and- go or drive around on any garbage day and you can pick up a half a dozen yeah, yeah. Well, along with what, weed whackers and leaf in the blowers late, and yeah, in the late late let's not forget about glow plug model motors right, right. yeah that's but that's right. cool but i honestly like one of the things my dad did this and a lot of guys did this i wanted a motorcycle so bad and he would never buy me one but one day he said, hey, I got this horizontal shaft fucking lawnmower, and Jimmy gave us this dirt mini bike frame. You're responsible for the rest. I couldn't have a motorcycle, but I had a lawnmower. Right. That's and right. So I would work on my lawnmower because that's but all I But did you ever build do. a mini bike? Like, that was a big <laughs> thing for me. Like, like, I got a frame from my dad, this beat up. It was probably from the 60s, but he gave me a beat up frame, and then... It was, I think it was a rototiller motor, to be honest with you, because it had the, the horizontal shaft. And yeah, he was yeah, like, yeah. you want a motorcycle? Here you go. And he gave me those two things. No wheels, no anything. A frame and a fucking rototiller motor. Nice. No, I never even got that. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was old enough, I scraped together some money in my first bike I bought for 50 bucks and didn't tell anybody about it. Right. <laughs> was that the one that didn't have a, a clutch? Didn't have a clutch. It was all kinds of names. We've heard about that bike. Yeah, yeah. I got a Hyundai like that right now. So our Hyundai Elantra mm. clutch Ooh. broke. Ooh. So the clutch broke. So the lever, like the whole clutch mechanism fucking broke. Right. You got a master slave issue. Yeah. So the replacement hey, part. Hey, hey. <laughs> it's puppy. We're going to get demonetized. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. It's, it's, what yeah. is it now? They, it's a man. Yeah. We can't no, call, they it call it. A, they call it something in puppy. No, no, it's a master Owner slave. and puppy. Owner and puppy? Yeah, is that what it is? Instead what of master is. and slave? Yeah, no, yeah, more yeah. Da- no, no more Domins. No more Domins sub. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, Merritt's car the other day, she was driving it home uh, from work, as she does. And because it's summertime, <laughs> and so because it's summertime, the Hyundai doesn't get driven very much. My wife, this is the season when my wife drives unfortunate Japanese domestic vehicles. So, this is the time of the year when my wife is always on the right side of a car, which is the wrong side of a car. 
<laughs> so she has to take her friend to work who's injured and doesn't want to crawl into a ridiculous little Japanese car because she's got a broken leg. So Merritt's like, I'm going to do a solid. I'm going to do her a solid. I'm going to go pick her up in a modern 2016 Hyundai Elantra. Sure. All the conveniences and luxuries one would come to expect. Allegedly. Allegedly. But it's a car that sits. It's a car that sits in my driveway because it's a utility vehicle. It is just a car. Right. It could be anything. It does not need to be a Hyundai or a Toyota or a Ford. It is simply transportation. So Merritt drove it and she says, you know, on the way back from her place, um, the clutch felt a little weird. Mm -hmm. It was hanging up. And then a couple of times I actually had to tow the clutch up off the floor. Oh. And I was like, I bet you that was exciting. Because, you know, if the clutch is stuck on the floor yeah. and you put it in gear and you're trying to leave the light and the clutch doesn't come up and you tow it up, game on. <laughs> That's props to her for figuring that shit out. Have you dude. met my wife? Well, no, of course. Yeah. yeah she's she's completed a lot of races on motorcycles yeah. without a clutch. Yeah. If there was so, going to be anybody yeah. that could do it, it would be her. But I'm just saying props just put to your her. Foot on, That's just fucking... put your foot on the gas and commit. Yeah. Reach down, grab a pair and go, go, go. <laughs> So she gets the thing home. So I got in the driveway and I'm, you know, futtering around with it. Yeah. And so I push the clutch and the clutch goes straight to the floor with no resistance whatsoever. And I'm like, well, that's not right. So I'm like, well, you know, the pressure is probably low. The hydraulic clutch pressure is probably too low. So let's pump that bugger up. Mm -hmm. So I get on there and I, I give it like shop, 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 some big pumps. So I give it some big pumps, pump, pump, pump. And all of a sudden that son of a bitch is high and proud. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. But then I go to push it and she don't push at all. So I'm like, you will comply. <laughs> so I take the seat back a few inches, get my leg good extensions. I got about 750 pound leg press. Uh -huh. So I figure I can throw at least 350 at this clutch pedal. Yeah. Turns out modern cars, the, the rod on the clutch pedal is made of a uh, uh, Lego candy cane. Yeah. Candy cane. So that if you're in a crash, it doesn't explode your legs. Uh -huh. So I pushed it and I pushed it and I pushed it. And I pushed it until it broke. Uh -huh. Tink. Yeah. It, it made a very plasticky broken leg sound. As my foot smashed to the floor. The fucking celery foley. Yep. It was perfect. <laughs> and this clutch lever just, the clutch pedal just right to the fucking floor. Yeah. So I was like, oh, oh, that's really broken now. Not moving. No, she's not moving at all. <laughs> so I looked the parts up and everything is cheap, but that's not a problem. The problem is I'm not going to try to fix it in my driveway right. because I own a car shop now. Yeah. Oh, Congratulations. I bought Palanges a while yeah, ago, so I, well, I own a car shop. I knew it was in the yeah. works. But I, so okay. I own a car shop. The problem is the car shop isn't in my garage. Right. The car shop is in North Ridgeville, which is like 20 minutes from my house. Sounds like Palanges needs to buy a tow truck. That's what James said. <laughs> Shit. What the fuck? Have you been talking to James? That's a very expensive proposition. I don't know if you've looked up rollbacks recently. It doesn't have to be a great Gov deals, tow man. Truck. Gov deals. Man. They got to have some of them fuckers on there. So, yeah, you're right. All of the above, I need to buy a tow truck. So, my wife, my wife being my wife and the smarter part of this relationship, she goes, well, clearly what you're going to do is you're going to stop at U-Haul on your way home. You're going to get a tow dolly. You're going to show up in the driveway with the tow dolly. And tow it to your shop. And we'll put the Hyundai on the tow dolly. Now, if anybody who's ever driven a stick shift car with no clutch knows that putting a car on a tow dolly with no clutch is... There's a secret. You park the car pointing out. You park, do the parking brake. And then you have the car in neutral and you back the tow dolly into the car very quickly. Oh. I was thinking jacks, but I guess that works just as good. I think I've done it. Probably just call a tow company and for less than a hundred bucks. Yeah, I don't know what it would cost them to move this thing out to Palanges, but I'm about to find out. The other option, though, which is my favorite option, is personal challenge accepted. <laughs> Drive a car from <laughs> no. my house to Palanges with no clutch. With no clutch. Nice. It all depends on the starter and if you can start it. Is so it here's a, the thing: is it a push button or is it a key? It is a key. That's good. It is good. That bodes well in your favor. So here's what I did. So the other day I had to move vehicles around in the driveway, getting ready for this whole picking up the car with the tow dolly thing. Right, I had to make, right. I had to make the car that was pointing at my garage, no longer point at my garage. <laughs> so I was like, okay, we'll put it in neutral and I'll roll it backwards. And I rolled it backwards out of the driveway, turned it around. But then I realized my street kind of goes downhill towards the lake. Cause yep. where I live, everything goes downhill towards the lake. Right. It's called plumbing. So I was like, shit, I tried to push whoa, the whoa, car. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So as soon as the car was pointed northbound, <laughs> the car decided it didn't need me pushing it anymore. Right. And even though you couldn't see the curvature of the earth, the earth is round. And it goes downhill towards water. So the car started going without me, which is fine. I jumped in and pulled the e-brake. And then I had to push it back up the hill, which didn't work. Because no. I'm not big enough or strong enough. Too old. So you have so, to go around the block. Right, yeah. Then, then, <laughs> then it's uphill both ways. So I was like, you know what? Fuck this. She's inside meditating, which means she's off limits for 40 minutes, right? <laughs> I can do this. I put it in reverse. I put the clutch on the floor, which is doing nothing, but it's activating the safety switch. 
So the clutch is on the floor. I hit the start button and the car immediately starts backing up on the starter motor. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And then the engine fires because yeah. it does. Yeah. And now I'm going backwards. It wasn't too bad at first, but eventually the revs picked up and eventually the car stopped trying to stall itself. Right. Yeah. So eventually I was going about seven and a half miles an hour backwards into my own driveway at full lock. <laughs> That's faster than you want to be going backwards. Hit the brake. So what I did was I reached down and I just killed the ignition. Killed the ignition. So I just killed the ignition. And then as it kind of lurched, I popped it into neutral. So I wouldn't be doing any hard play uh, against yeah, yeah. the transmission and gears and whatnot. Cause I'm not an idiot. Right. I was like, that worked remarkably well. So then I bump, bump, bumped it back to where I wanted it to be. And I was like, I think using that technique and having never done it before, except this one time, I'm now ready to drive it 21 miles yeah. <laughs> in reverse in no in Ford. I got five gears, but, six gears. But to your point, I, I drove my Corvette all the way from the Metro parks yeah. back to my house. The same With day. no clutch. Yeah. No clutch. Well, right. Yeah. The thing is, is the Marlin, the, Mar- the world it. famous Marlin crawler, which is like a, a, a Toyota pickup truck that can go up a fucking brick wall. Yeah, okay. if you want it to. Right. One of the tricks that it has yeah. is that if it gets too steep and he can't work the clutch anymore, right. He lays it out, and yeah. he has a thing where it's in first gear, right. and he just uses Bumps the, the starter. starter motor oh, absolutely. to pull it up fucking things. Fucking so, perfect. like, I mean, it's it's obviously a bigger starter motor, yeah. but most people don't realize the strength the of a fucking starter motor. The power of a starter motor. motor. Yeah. Well, then you can get a four-to-one starter yeah. motor, or a half-reduction starter yeah, motor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's actually just going, zzz, 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 but the motor's just going. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Yeah. When we had our bumper car at yeah. the old shop, we had a... a amusement park bumper car, you know, German bumper car from the sixties. Yeah. And how we had that powered was we had one Starter. or two car batteries, oh, your choice. Shit. 48 volt and then 24, 24 volts. Yeah. And then we had a Toyota truck starter <laughs> on a chain drive oh. on a six to one sprocket. Oh shit. So it didn't go fast, No. but it could pull anything anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So it was fun for being a bumper car. In college, my buddy had a Toyota Corolla wagon or something yeah. and it wouldn't start. But what, unless you put it in reverse, yeah. hit the starter, drove it out of the parking lot, put it in forward, drove drove it out onto the street and down the hill, and then you dr- and you then dr- you bump start. Then you put it in neutral, let it coast, let it coast, oh and then be God. like, brr, yeah. and boom, and it would start. Dude, it's a fucking hybrid. Yeah. So wait, you had to drive it out of the parking you lot. Drove you drove it out on to, electrics. Yeah. And then you started the gas. This Once you got a, going fast enough, it would start. This is a huge John Mucklefresh moment. I've just noticed. No. You have a new hat. Yeah. This is a new. Oh, holy yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah, that is kind of right? weird. Holy There's nothing shit. falling off of it. No. There's no open ends no. to it. Uh, yeah, I, you got a new that hat. hat's still at home, and I was wearing it earlier today. But I, <laughs> I, I, the other hat was uh, it wasn't a Mario Fazio's. What was it? No, that hat was from uh, out in California when I went out to the place with the cactuses. Uh, and this is such a joyous hat. This is a great Joshua hat. Tree. Joshua Tree. Look at this no, because you had a hat before that that was some kind of Italian uh, well, pizza hat, shop. Okay, that was one. I've had yeah. two. <laughs> I had two Tony Pacos. Tony Pacos. Yeah. That's it. My Here I'm saying fucking, Italian. My yeah. last one was Papa Bear. I had Papa yeah. Bear. Tony Pacos have... is next to the Mud Hen Stadium in Toledo. There's right? a yeah. few of them, but yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, that's funny. Yeah. So you got a brand new hat with a smiley face on it. Going on back, I used to have a Block Island hat with the Jolly Roger I remember the, blo- yeah, was, the Block Island hat, hat was a prime hat. I but this is a good hat. This is. I like this hat. Peggy just bought this for me. It's a very nice. It makes me happy. It is a <laughs> joyous hat. And that's yeah. not just because yeah, you're on I, shrooms. No. Yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> why don't you have a nice day? <laughs> he's a big scary fucker, yeah. but he's happy. Yeah. How <laughs> so, else are you supposed to buy a house, though? Let me ask you that. On shrooms. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm saying, you're going yeah. to make the largest financial purchase of your entire goddamn life. Right. Best to be skating. <laughs> that's what yeah. I'm saying, dude. <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> to my left. Chris Smith. And again, Chris Smith, though, uh, what did he bring? He bought a bottle. There's a bottle hiding back there. I see a bottle. Oh, my God. Dude, I've never seen this in my life. This is one of my favorite, favorite bottles ever. It says Hotel Tango, which is the military term for HT, distilled with discipline, American straight bourbon whiskey, bourbon ready to drink. So if you guys, (laughs) if you ever know, like, I'm in the military, all the shit in the military is like, yeah, I get it now. Hat. Black, watch, type, one each. Right. Right? Meals, ready to eat. This is bourbon, ready to drink. And the uh, OD green label says, pour with purpose, serve with honor, high standard issue. That's a To pour this side up, this side up to store. The labeling is fucking read, genius. Wait, can he read have the back. it? Read well, the back. I'm going to wait a whole I don't up. think he can have it. He had shin splints, didn't he? Oh, is that what his whole he can't fuck? serve? No. Now, wait a second, though. I do like this. It says, purpose of contents, to be served and consumed in pursuance of elevated company morale. Oh. 
Elevated company morale. I love that. 90 proof, not fooling around. The back says beverage ration. Nice beverage (laughs) ration. (laughs) That's a good beverage ration. I mean, come on. (laughs) That's a proper beverage ration. If this is what the Kentucky National Guard should have issued to them, drink it. I don't know why it doesn't come in an aluminum canteen. Oh, good point. Good point. That could, that's the only thing that could make it better. So, again, I am completely, it says best in a cocktail, e.g. old-fashioned. Oh, nice. Well done. Nice. Drink responsibly, behave less so. <laughs> <laughs> again, we talked about the Tanuki last podcast. We might need to spot this company. We need to talk to this We company. might have to talk yeah. to Hotel Tango Distillery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hotel Tango Distillery, uh, they are the first combat disabled veteran-owned distillery in the oh. United States. They are bottled in India, no place, Indiana. So that's where they are. From and they're one distilled, veteran they're to distilled another. by Middle West Spirits in Columbus, Ohio. We so should say, hey. oh, there's, there's, there's another thing on here. I missed something? That. Shit. We need to say that our, our host and moderator yeah. is a veteran. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we, yeah. can, we can make this all work, yeah. you know? Oh, what is that? I'm a disabled military veteran. Now, the disabling a came mental, after my a military mental, service. A mentally disabled <laughs> American exactly. veteran. Yeah. Right there. Oh, it says uh, American straight bourbon whiskey aged two years. <laughs> two, two, two years. Two whopping years. That's very braggable. <laughs> it's <laughs> aged two whole years and served in the finest glass. Right. It's oh, got to be two oh, yeah, years. We're going to crack that bad the boy. It's got to be two years to be called straight to straight. Might even sit on a yep. shelf for another yep. year, though. You that's know. how you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's badass. I'm going to leave it up here so the podcast listeners yeah. can see it. And then at some point, we're going to open that up when we get done with roll call to his left. The husk of a shell that used to be me. The husk of a shell. <laughs> Look, man. Know. You can't. You cannot. You can't say this. The seed has been spent. Buying one house drained you. No. Come seed on. Has been spent. No, I just today was. The check was so heavy, it was ridiculous. Did you yeah. ever write one of those checks and you're like, I need more pen? Dude, like I can't write this check with this pen. I'm just yeah. like after this check, I literally can't go to McDonald's. Like no, I'm I, I, like, I, I, I have <laughs> written those checks. Yeah, I've also written checks where I've called the bank before <laughs> and after. Here's the best part. <laughs> yeah. So like we were trying to be so on point with this shit, right? And like we kept calling and saying, "Well, what's the final amount and all this stuff?" Right. And, we have to show up to sign the 7,000 fucking things of paperwork. And that's when I decided it'd be a good idea to do mushrooms. So that's, that's what I did. And then, because I knew my wife had most of this shit handled because she's way. And she was there. Oh yeah. Yeah. She was, was just not good. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. In fact, the lady asked. She me, wasn't let him go alone. No, no, no. The lady asked if I was okay. Cause I was making comments that apparently were not appropriate or so. I don't even know. But but I'm um, just hoping you still have your wits enough to sign your actual name. I did, but here's the funny part. So I'm he just there, drew a little fish. I'm <laughs> scratching. I'm scratching my chicken scratch on this shit. My yeah. wife's sitting there, and they're like, "Oh, we need you to have your because my wife's signature is kind of a squiggle with a bunch of squiggles." Yeah. But they had to have the declar or the it had to show the breaks between her first name, middle name, and then the last name. Oh but my usually God. it doesn't. Huh. So she was arguing. So I'm sitting there. At this point, pretty out of my fucking face. Right. Listen to her argue with this lady saying that like her signature wouldn't be relevant because it's not her actual signature because right. they're making her sign in a different way. Yeah. And then the lady went on to talk about how her boss had to do the same thing and she's keeping that in her back pocket. So if anything goes south, you can say that's not that's my fucking signature. Why you don't get signature. high during this I was going to say. <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. Is that your ex? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my Anyways, ex. it was interesting. So yeah, so basically, so now this house is mine. I get to yeah. move in in 15 days. That's amazing. Good for yeah, you. Thank yeah, you. And then we'll be out at the Steve's place in the country. Oh, yeah. And we'll be having ice racing. With a lake and a forest and all kinds of good country. stuff. Oh, yeah. I love and, it. Yeah. And I already got a banjo and... and um, <laughs> I'm ready to and a harpsichord have, and a oh, yeah. banjo in. Yeah, yeah, you kind of got a red green vibe too. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you're, we're gonna get you some suspenders. Okay, yeah, we'll I'm get in. you some red green suspenders. I'm in. You're gonna blend right in, <laughs> and all the yoders show up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yoder. Yoder. Don't find your handsome. You might as well find. Find you handy. handy. But what I'm worried about is I have to move ten might motorcycles, well handy. and I don't get access for 15 days. And it's November in Ohio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, in 15 yeah. days, it might become winter in Ohio. Right. And, and like, I can tow the small ones. Towing the big ones suck. Yeah. So I'd rather... Look, we just... have Dan's... So Dan's old trailer lives in my warehouse. Right, right. And we know where my warehouse is, which right. is in Parma, which is halfway between your old house and your new house. Right. So we can take my trailer that's that we know holds like but I'm hoping we can just have a ride party. I'd rather I'd rather have a ride party where yeah. we all go have a nice shot of whiskey yeah. to warm us up. We'll put the ones that then, don't run in the trailer. Right. We'll, well everything runs right now. Oh, that's no. Well, yeah, even the K100. So everything runs. All right, all right. 
Okay, well, you're riding the KE100. <laughs> I'll tow that one. I'll tow that one. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, that's cool. Well, there you go. So that's pretty... Congratulations, man. Thank you. Yay, that's a badass thing to do. Signing on your fucking brand new house. Yeah. And I love the fact that you're moving from Cleveland Heights, right. which is something that if, you, if you're if you a Clevelander, at some point, you will the try heights. living in the Heights. You will try living in the Heights. But there's so much culture there. No, it's great. I mean, seriously, I've lived there for nine years. Yeah. I love Cleveland Heights. I love my neighbors. In fact, the thing that I'm really sad about is leaving my neighbors. I love them dearly. Where are they going to get their weed? Well, well, he grows more than oh, I do. Oh, okay. So it's fine. Yeah. So that's one of the things. So my, <laughs> so my other neighbor, no. so me and my neighbor that are here, right? And so we're the same. But this other dude moved in and Mike has been talking to him yeah. and telling us about his. Oh, okay. So right. I had given Mike a little sample of something I'd done. He'd give me samples yeah. of his. So he gave them to the new neighbor. So I don't really know this Are guy. you being vetted by your weed? So check this out. So I get back yesterday from work, and the neighbor that I really don't know comes up. He's like, Mr. Steve, because he's younger. Okay. And apparently, I'm an old and guy Mr. now. Steve. I'm yeah, Mr. Hey, Steve. Well, he's like, Mr. Steve, Mr. Steve, Mr. Steve. And I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? He goes, TJ. I'm like, hey, what's up, TJ? He goes, Mike gave me a sample of your garden. Yeah. It's like, yeah, he goes, I couldn't move from my couch for three hours, but I wasn't mad about it. <laughs> and I was like, cool. And he goes, can you just... Any knowledge you have, I'd like to start. <laughs> and the I'm whisper. like, nobody in 50 years of existence has ever replied on my knowledge Do you of need anything. an apprentice? Yeah. <laughs> Harley Bob gave it, you read the thumbs up, one. and so did my friend Mike the Chemist. <laughs> okay, good. Wow, good, Mike good. the Chemist. Yeah, yeah. The, new, the new batch is pretty fucking Fuck it, gnarly, hey. man. It oh, is that's pretty, pretty cool. Good, yeah. I like that. That that's great that you have a you have a panel. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, have yeah. a legit consortium. And and here's the thing. Well, they Harley what, Harley it, Bob's the one that matters here. Yeah, no, I was gonna say his, they could be a guild. His panel, I could have fifty people tell me it's cool, but right. if his panel says right. it's cool, I was gonna say, I'm yeah. fucking and all right. That's how you do it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe she just brewed some cripple weed. <laughs> <laughs> Up on cripple creek. <laughs> I smoked some, now I can't. Was it indica? Was it indica? It I'm was, into couch. It was, <laughs> <laughs> Forever. That's the way. I, for the way that since I was 14 years old, yeah. that's my system. My mnemonic device is indica <laughs> means yeah. indica couch. couch. So ever since I was a little kid and couldn't that's remember amazing. sativas. Yeah, yeah. And how old were you when you discovered that? Fifty. <laughs> <laughs> indica couch, man. So oh, that was like good. I was always really like, oh, so do you? This is a really good indica. You want indica? And I'm like, no, I don't have that kind of time. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Indica couch is more like 10 p.m. and on. Yeah, indica couch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, believe me, at, in my house, there's there's <laughs> they're color coded. <laughs> they're in different parts of the refrigerator, so we don't want to make any accidents. Into I got to work for a living. Into my backside. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, sideways. And to your left. Yeah. Yeah. To hand cranky. To hand cranky. <laughs> and you also brought a bottle of bourbon. Yeah, I, this is one of my uh, discoveries from my trip to Wisconsin this summer. This oh. is Wild Turkey Kentucky Spirit Single Ooh. Barrel. I had this last, so I had this the other night at Porco when we couldn't find... <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't find we couldn't find bourbon to make a Roman twist with. And they had a bottle of that and they were like, well, we'll just use this. And I was like, no, you don't use that to mix to make a right. Roman twist. And they're like, but it's the only bourbon we have right now. And I was like, okay, but just let me drink it beforehand. So it is, it's, it's really that good. Was the Wild Turkey's Caesar. been my, my go-to for old fashions for a while. We've talked about it at my house. The, the biggest bottle of bourbon at my house is always a bottle of overproof wild turkey. So I, mean, I just, I think that wild turkey is just about the perfect utility player. Dan's the Especially guy. Especially for November. Yeah. When you go to Dan's house, he'll serve you a $45 drink. <laughs> like, here you go. <laughs> well, Dan taught me a lesson that I have trained, that I've used to people that are smarter than me. Yeah. And they've always been impressed by it. And they're, they're always like, okay, you, you, you meet up with a group of, professionals in anything right. and they always start the night with like you know the okay stuff sure. but then you know okay well the evening's wearing on a little thin all right now i'm gonna blow them away out comes the good shit mm -hmm. and you bring out the good shit and the thing is everybody's so fucking puck you know fucked up that you bring out the good shit nobody remembers the good shit right. and nobody really can appreciate the good shit he starts with the good shit right and then goes downhill from there, which makes perfect fucking sense. I had a friend. So my wife, before she became a, a mump that doesn't drink anymore, because she <laughs> was trying to learn coding or whatever. Anyways, she was a sommelier. She went to yeah. school. She did the whole thing, right? 
Yeah. And so she would go to these parties with like, you know, like like people. She used to work in the restaurant industry. There would be like all the heads of these restaurants yeah. would get together and then like wine cellars would come. Oh. And they would oh. thing right? But yeah. the thing that they would do, and she learned this because she was in the back room like helping serve because she got hired a couple of times to serve during these sure. big parties. Right? Oh, yeah. So they'd bring out these like $300 bottles of wine. Mm-hmm. And they'd serve it. And everybody yeah. tasted me like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll have some of that, whatever. Right. But then they'd bring out a $200 bottle of wine. Okay. And they'd say, hey, would anybody like another bottle? Of the thing? Oh, yeah, give me another one of that. And then they just put $40 whatever wine into the $300 because people were so hammered at that point. They have they no had idea. no idea. They have and they just no keep serving idea. Them all this. So yeah. they thought that they were spending like ten grand sure. on this fucking dinner. Yeah. They spent like, you yeah. know, well, I mean, it was. Keeps the cost down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was interesting. Yeah. I love that, that, that lesson of opening strong. <laughs> Like opening strong and making like putting your best foot forward sure. is exactly what that yeah, is. Nobody knows after fucking six drinks. Oh no shit! <laughs> well, yeah, after that's, four. That's my strategy. If you, when you go to the like a bar, yeah. your first drink leave a heavy tip. Yes, absolutely. Hey, that's yeah. just like yeah. uh, if you're gonna leave right. ten bucks, leave it right up front. Oh, right up front. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't let's let's play the game of averages. I'll start strong, and if I finish weak, you'll always remember that I started strong. Right. Yeah. That's exactly it. And to his left, Johnny Mac, as we said with a brand new hat. I gotta do that. Yeah, it's lovely. What you think about that? Uh, again, face, I think well, we all agree. I'm so, too sexy for my hat. If there was anybody, <laughs> if there was anyone who missed episode number 349, yeah, or what I'm going to call 340 nonsense, yeah, uh, episode was, 340 nonsense is a pretty funny episode. But we talked about one of our podcast listeners had sent me an email mm-hmm. that said one of our patreons, in fact, had sent me an email uh, that said. One, he loves hearing about Patreons, like the stuff the Patreons write. So I am going to bring up one more Patreon right now that says, uh, just wanted to thank, so this is Moto Hop. Oh. Moto okay. Hop, right? Cool, cool. So Moto Hop says, just wanted to say thank you, Phil, near the two hour and 35 minute mark of episode number 348. <laughs> the three hour tour. <laughs> he made it all the way to Again, two. the dude <laughs> made it two hours and 35 minutes into the three hour tour. <laughs> So well done. Moto I'm Hop. still working on it. <laughs> exactly. Here's to you, Moto Hop. At the two hour and 35 minute of episode number 348, I discovered that I'm not the only person that continually presses the turn signal canceller while I ride to make sure that my turn signals are canceled. I'm glad. Thank you. You have validated and vindicated me. Yeah. I now feel like a better human being and I no longer will hate my videos when I watch my own videos of m- me test riding a bike and I see my left hand jabbing that phantom fucking button stroke in the can stroke you know, the I do the same thing I often wonder if other riders yeah. can, can see me pressing right. it all the time like do they think right. I'm crazy or, or what do they think I'm doing right. to people that don't know what this is am I gonna wear the spring out <laughs> Dude, I got a guy on a fucking Bergman today that showed up at a Bergman and he literally broke his starter button. Like the the starter button is it's broken. Now, how many times do you have to press a starter button to break it? And it's straight up busted. It and it's not like he hit it on anything. He's like, it worked great, and then it just stopped working. The harder you hit it, the yeah. better it will better try it to starts. start the motors. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the case? Give it a little extra. So <laughs> we will. Um, so we will remember that um, one of our podcast listeners, uh, actually podcast listener from Japan, the most amazing dude ever. Apparently, the smartest man on the planet. Yeah, the smartest man on the planet discovered Nazuki. discovered that in fact our spirit animal for our podcast should in fact be. The Tanuki. So uh, for people that weren't listening or for people who wisely saw, saw that the podcast was three hours long and said, I'll skip that and go to a shorter oh, that one. That was two podcasts ago. The Tanuki last, was last weekend. Yeah, it's it was only two hours. Today. You know, 48 right. was three yeah, hour yeah, tour. Okay, thank you. Right. Tanuki was, or Tanuki was yeah. two hours. Right. Tanuki is a two hour, a nice tight two hours. Oh. Yeah. It's fucking, look at that. I got all kinds of fucking brain power. The now. brain's turned on, I guess. Yeah, oh. So. So there we go. The sediment got stirred up off the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, what I would it's called like... called a sludge. Yeah, I, and that's exactly what it I is. I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you guys, in front of you, you're going to see some brown cardboard boxes. Um, I'm going to give this to you to open. Um, and John, you're going to open that one. I don't have a knife. Do they have to do it at the same time? You don't have to do it at the same time. Here you go, John. I use it. I, I use it. That's that's a Gerber, but it's a Gerber by name alone. It's a fucked up cheap Gerber. Does it fling open? Is this no, supposed to it be doesn't. Hissing? It's awful. It doesn't. No, no, you got to do it the old fashioned way. Oh, Jesus. 
Yeah, it violates all the rules of Gerber. It's his thing. It's a twenty-five dollar Home Depot Gerber, which barely counts for anything. Ah. All right. So this is uh, so as a result of us discovering now that we have a spirit animal, and as a result of <laughs> as a result of me being who I what am. What in God's name? Yeah. All right. Be careful. Be careful. Okay. They're fragile. Easy. Fragile. Easy. Fragile. Everybody gets one. Oh no way! Everybody gets one. No, you, I got mine already. Here. here. Everybody gets one. So uh, what you got there is you got a Tanuki Tiki mug. Ooh. That is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I'm so proud of the fact that they nailed it, that the Tanuki Tiki mug <laughs> has giant balls. Just giant, giant balls. Is that uh, for a straw? And a life-size yeah. Mackle Fresh wiener. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So That's I am awesome. so happy that... Um, wow. I, I'm very happy. I like that the glaze is very nice. It's a yeah. it's a nice glaze. It's a really I mean it's a really really fun tiki mug, and uh, so for our podcast listeners, I just brought one of them up on screen so oh, they can see it. That's fucking awesome. The, uh, but yeah, the Tanuki <laughs> tiki mug. So uh, he's got tits though. I don't know about that. Well, it's more of a Buddha thing. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right. So are you saying that none of us have <laughs> boobs? I'm not saying that. Moves. Okay. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm just saying, dude. Let's acknowledge the situation. Yeah, yeah. Oh, those are just giant pectorals. Yeah, yeah. I work out a lot. I work out a lot. <laughs> it's never leg day. So that's our Tanuki mugs. Uh, so, well, thank you. You guys, you guys oh, are more than yeah. welcome. I couldn't have been thank happier you, to spend our uh, Patreon Fuck, yeah, money on man. Tanuki mugs. Thank you, uh, Patreon. Yeah, so that's to thank our Patreon listeners for paying for our Tanuki mugs. Um, so what's going to happen, though, is... We, these need filled with something. Well, yeah. Don't they though? So, uh, so we're going to move into that part of the evening. Uh, so, but I do want to read this because this is important for people who don't understand the Tanuki thing and why it means so much to us. Oh, it's so good. Tanukis are gifted with magical power. They have eight special traits that differentiate them from their common brethren. They wear a wide brimmed hat to protect themselves from bad luck and bad weather. They hold a bottle of liquor in one hand, which symbolizes virtue. And in the other hand, they hold a promissory note, which symbolizes trust. They have large eyes to survey their world and to make good decisions. A big fluffy tail to give them strength and agility. Large scrotums, which represent wealth. And a large stomach, which symbolizes tranquility and decisiveness. Finally, they wear a playful, friendly smile, inviting humans to join them in their games. Well, that just about wraps it up. I, I couldn't be happier. Sounds like <laughs> us. I couldn't be happier. So again, that's the story of the Tanuki and, uh, and why that was so brilliant that some podcast listener of ours was nice enough to think that that was a good representation of kind of what we're all about. So yeah, so that's awesome. And do, thanks to uh, Dynasty Beverage Supply, I was able to score. If you look behind you, you'll see a large cardboard box. Oh, wow. Those are all Tanukis. We got a lot of Tanukis. Oh, shit. Well, it turns out you can't order just eight. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I would say you have a gross of yeah. Tanukis there. Not a gross, but yeah, a couple dozen. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do some, I think we're going to do some fun stuff with the podcast where we're going to give podcast listeners the opportunity to have their very own Tanuki. And if you're tanuki good, tiki. a Tanuki Tiki mug. Yeah. So they can have a Tanuki Tiki mug if they're good. And uh, I think I've discovered that Sharpie markers are really good for signing them and writing things on them. So that could be fun, too. So you could get a very special personalized message on your Tanuki Tiki mug. So I thought that was just fun. So that's nice. Yeah. So that's great. So that's all about our podcast listeners giving us great ideas and then turning a great idea into an awesome souvenir. I can't wait to make a beverage and for my daughter and give it to her. Yes, this exactly. Mug. And how long do you think? <laughs> yeah. And how long will you think it takes? So after last week's podcast, um, I talked to Dr. Waters and I was showing her, I kind of get out the old, uh, you know, got the big screen TV out there. And I, I showed her, I was like, so podcast listener told us about this Tanuki thing. And we did a little research and I pulled up the deep dive on the, the YouTubes <laughs> and uh, I, all the pictures came up and I was like, yeah, so you know, it's Tanuki. I explained what Tanuki was and she was really cool. And she goes, it has really big balls. <laughs> and I was like, I was wondering how long it was going to take my wife, who is spiritual and meditative and, and very much uh, lives Eastern. in... Eastern. Yeah, very Eastern, very, very kind. And Kindness is her thing. And again, yeah. right. And, and she is cultural sensitivity embodied, right, right? right? Again, married to me, which shows that there's a yin for every yang. <laughs> sure. Yep. 
<laughs> so that's uh, why we know we can all get along. It's and as I said, the the statement around the house is my wife is yin and yang, yeah. and I'm yeet and yoink. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it works. It's totally how we live. But the uh, but it's when she saw it, she was like, "Holy shit!" And if you do tanuki tenu- porn, oh boy. we're not going to do it here. But Renee and I at the shop the other night, we did uh, of course we did a deep dive on tanuki porn. Was that Human Resources Day? Renee is so for the people who know, Renee is our Human Resources Officer at the shop. Yep. And uh, we made her Human Resources Officer because most of the complaints were about her. So we figured <laughs> if we're going to have to have a human resources officer, better have her be. It's like when police unions are doing the policing of the police right, thing. Right, you know, right, it's, right. Yeah, yeah. They got yeah. Loomis in there going, he was fine. He didn't do anything yeah, wrong. It was all right. Well, but, but so the idea, so Renee and I were just, and she's in her office on her computer doing a, a dive and I'm out, out here on my computer doing a deep dive. And she's like, oh no, you've got to go to Tanuki, you know, whatever, Tanuki anal assault.com. <laughs> I, that's not real. I just made that up. That could be real. Don't monetize that shit. Uh, but anyway, she's finding stuff and I'm just like, oh my God, that's ridiculous. But uh, here we are, Tanuki art. So this is one I couldn't find. I tried to find that one. So that one actually has the word Tanuki on it. Oh yeah. So it's right above his little dick. It says Tanuki. Yeah. And I tried like hell to find that particular Tanuki tiki mug and that is unobtainable. So, yep. So there we are. So if anybody wants to send us any Tanuki based art, we are, again, clevelandmoto at gmail.com. <laughs> if anybody wants to send us Tanuki-based art. That's what I see when I look in the fucking mirror. I know, dude. I'm like, this is not... So, like, Phil, this Phil is, do you have a VPN? What's this pink one there, though? I'm just yeah, kidding. Scroll up dude, I think that pink one's actually a pig. The one yeah. doing a handstand? That's yeah, just a pig. This yeah, really kind of puts you that's in a, a porco, hard that's reflection a porco on special. your life. Ah. You're like, well, I hold booze bottles in my hand, and yeah. I basically have that shape. Yeah. Well, you know, and the other thing, too, is the Harley Owners Group. Yeah. Hogs. They've embraced the hog lifestyle a long, long time ago, to the point where it's turned into just a ter- an affectation, right? A term of endearment, if you will. Uh, but the Tanuki thing is, it's pretty much on point. It's... Uh, so it's it's hard for me to not be really happy this about it. As an excuse, like when your wife's like, "Dude, are you going to go on a diet or anything?" I'm like, "No, dude, I have to look like our mascot." That's the whole. I think it's f- interesting. There's a his and hers Tanuki on the screen right now. Like when oh. we could way, be Tog, the, the, tano- the whole, Tanuki owners group, the Tanuki owners group. But wait, do they have a bulbous the clam? Is in this. Like yeah. How you would fill it? going to be kind of interesting. There are a lot of tiki monks that are kind of hard to fill. So, um, and this one in particular, you could only use small ice for. So you probably only used crushed ice for this one. But the uh, but I, I was just I was stunned, thrilled, and amazed that the damn thing exists. So here we are, and, yeah. And there you have it. So fucking rad. Uh, yeah, and he does have his booze bottle and his promissory note. Exactly. The pro- I had to look up the fucking promissory note thing because I was like, what does the promissory note thing even mean? And basically, what it means is in Japanese culture, uh, the <laughs> idea would be that somebody has said that your credit is good. Somebody said that you're worthy of this. You know, you've got. Something written. My bond is my word. My bo- yeah, exactly. That's it. My word is my bond. Yep. So there you have it. And so I thought that was just fucking hilarious. So game cool. on, man. Yeah. yeah. So that was pretty cool. Uh, Wait, so a tanuki is actually a real animal. There's a real goddamn animal oh, yeah. called a tanuki. Okay. It's so, a raccoon dog. <laughs> right. <laughs> because I saw okay. that, too. I'm like, yeah. That so, wasn't just like a jackalope, a, right? I'm pull no, him up no. there for you. I'm going to pull him up so you can see him. There's the raccoon yeah, dog. there he is. That's real. That's a real animal. Um I think his balls may have been exaggerated. No, he's sitting on them. Look at him. <laughs> I, looks like you see a sack there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but but yeah, that's a tanuki. That's what they are. Uh, you know, they're they're just they're they're you know they're kind of cool. So again, they I don't look actually very petable in the wild. No. <laughs> you know, I, you know what I was saying. Somebody was like, "It's a cross between a raccoon and a dog," and I was like, "It looks like a cross between a raccoon and a fucking badger." Yeah. yeah. And if you ask me. The cross between a raccoon and a badger is not with which to be fucked. No. You know, I mean, <laughs> serious. That's like you lose a finger every time you say it. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> badgers are badgers, man. It could be like, like a raccoon and a Maine coon or something. Like a, oh, yeah. Like a cat. A big yeah. cat or something. I, I'm going to say, like, that is one of those things where when you look at it and you look at the animal and you're like, oh, that's, you know, that's kind of cute. That's adorable. No big deal. Um, it is, I get you, I'm going to guess that in real life, it's probably vicious. Like it's Step probably below Wolverine. Exactly. Yeah. This is this is the whole thing. It, it won't, is the it worst won't part actually of a eat your bones, yeah. but it'll chew on them. Yeah. It's the worst part of a raccoon and the worst part of a badger. Yeah. 
So it's here's true. a little thing I brought it up. Uh, it says that they are popular in Japanese folklore. They uh, hibernate communally by snuggling with their partners. Aww. Aww. They live in monogamous pairs. Aww. Aww. They are not related to raccoons. Ooh. Matter of debate, I think. But anyway, they are symbolic for prosperity and economic growth, which is cute and adorable. But again, well done. Yeah. Whoever chose that as our spirit animal. I think I'm, we're really going to yeah. start turning things around now that we've yeah. Yeah. Now that we've identified. I think this podcast is really going to start. 11 years in, we're really going to make a change. Thanks to our Here come the sponsors. They're right. going to come rolling in. All Tonight. the episodes before 350, right, or 349, nah, nothing. But once they got onto that Tanuki kick, woo. Welcome to the Cleveland Motor Podcast tonight. On we'll be able to hire some other people to do the podcast for us. Tonight on Motorcycles and Misfits. Yes, we're going to talk. We're going to talk to Liza about. Yeah. So that was just. We're going to talk. We're, we're going to talk about the person who invented the seat. <laughs> That's a deep dive. Yes, it is. So tell us a little bit about when you invented the seat. Where were you? At? When we dive into your history hole. Well, funny enough. I was sitting on a plank of wood, and I thought, this was very stiff, so I decided to add some foam to it. <laughs> That's a fascinating observation. Wasn't it? it was, yes. And it was, it, was, it was organic. Tell us it more. Happened. It was very organic, and we used all organic materials, and nothing was harmed in the making of the seat. It was amazing. You know that's so important today. It is. So the reason we're doing this is there's a podcast out there called The Motorcycles and Misfits. And if you've listened to us for even one fucking episode, you'll know that we have an unnatural relationship with them. But... At some point, I don't know, way too fucking long ago, they started saying if you had any complaints about the Motorcycles and Midsmith podcast, to direct all your complaints to Phil at ClevelandMoto.com. <laughs> I like it. No, I don't fucking like it at all because that's my corporate email address. Okay, so if you're going to direct... Thousands roll If in. you're going to complain, direct all your complaints to ClevelandMoto at gmail.com, that's great. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> I have no problem with that. But Phil at ClevelandMoto.com is my corporate email address. Right. It's the one that I've managed to successfully, carefully, right. artisanally create an environment with no spam. Phil, if you don't, if I don't hear back from you by tomorrow, you will not get the next shipment of Vespas. Yeah. And then 75, yeah. fuck you. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, Liza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's every time anybody takes any issue. But really what it is, and the reason I don't bring it up and, and talk about it more, is because what's happened is in this like false flag operation that are the listeners of the Motorcycles and Misfits podcast, they've taken to creating artificial hate mail right. for Cleveland Moto, oh. and they're putting it off as being that they're complaining to Liza <laughs> about how their podcast is better than Cleveland Moto. And now I'm convinced that these emails that are coming in are coming in from Liza. They're probably knock. Yeah, or knock. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So these emails that are coming in, I'm not going to do anybody the dignity of fucking reading these things. Because honestly, it's such an obvious fucking bait and switch. Or it's mm. such an obvious like, yeah, you know, you fucking motorcycles and misfits are always right about everything all the time. And that's why I hate you so much. Mm -hmm. You should be more like Cleveland Moto, which doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. And I'm like, yeah, oh yeah, that came into Phil at ClevelandMoto.com. I mean, they're not wrong though. Well, again, <laughs> we've never claimed to be accurate no. or interesting. Again, I, I I messaged Jackie tonight, and I was like, hey, if you're in town and you want to be on the world's worst motorcycle podcast, right, right, yeah. But again, Jackie's smart. She knows we have one female listener. She's getting paid to be somewhere. Oh, of course she is. Yeah. She's fucking Jackie, She's fucking yeah. smartest girl I know. Yeah, yeah. 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 and also, again. Solid fucking gold. Like she is, we're talking about Jackie Van Ham. And if you haven't been to JackieVanHam.com, uh, she's is that our sponsor for today. It could be. Oh, oh shit. I'm going to, I want to make sure that that's really a thing. Cause I just kind of <laughs> made that up. <laughs> oh shit. If there isn't a JackieVanHam.com, I'm going to be upset. There is, it is. She has okay. a real website. So okay. it's Jackie Van Ham. So, um, Jackie Van Ham announcer, host, personality, officially, officially endorsed by Cleveland Moto Podcast. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to increase the professionalism of your event with somebody who knows and lives motorcycles, mm -hmm. not just somebody yelling into a microphone and is going to get everything wrong and make your event look stupid, because they do. We've all been to events where somebody who's never seen a motorcycle is right. commentating. On right? top of that, she posts regularly on all the, the things, and she has been in a bikini <laughs> fixing... Her 1972 Dodge transmission. Dodge transmission. No, it's not even that old. Okay. It's, so, a, it's a relatively modern Dodge. Okay. But and she's had that transmission apart. Right. 
multiple times. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> yeah. like she's actually a person she's that will get as underneath the car yeah, in a bikini she's super and cool. get oily. Yeah, she's super cool. And 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 I again, totally don't stock those pictures at all. <laughs> <laughs> it is true though. It's Jackie Van Ham, and her name is spelt kind of funny. It's J A C Q U I. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, get on her Instagram. She posts yeah, all the dude. time. Like every time she's in a hotel that has a good pool. You'll see like the lower 70% of her. Yeah. Yeah. I learned about side boob from her shots. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, Jackie, we love you. But yeah, her uh, her thing, her, her website's actually called Jackie Van Ham. It's J-A-C-Q-U-I. So that's Jackie the hard way. Van, V-A-N-H-A-M dot com. So Jackie Van Ham. And I think she's in town. I believe somebody in Cleveland is helping her out with her Jackie Van Van. So her J- Jackie Van Dodge. Oh, you want that bottle of liquor? Dan, Dan wants the bottle of liquor. I think somebody should open it. I'm busy running a podcast. The Jackie Dan yeah. Van. Jackie Dan Van. John Clad Dan Van. So that's cool. Uh, oh, I, I wanted to give you guys a super duper wintertime update. Oh. What so, do you mean wintertime? A wintertime update. Because it's 30 fucking seven de grizzles out there. It was cold. Yeah, 37 it's not degrees. Winter in Cleveland, though. On 20, yeah, on, 20 of- on 20 this morning, there was a half inch of fucking snow. Was all, there? Oh, dude. Mm. I, it must have been frost, but it was thick enough that it was fucking thick. So, my son Ty is going to work this morning over yeah. at the Fatheads. He's going down 480. Yeah. He says, Dad, there's a guy going down the left hand lane on a, uh, a dirt bike. <laughs> at 35 degrees, no helmet. What? Just a sweatshirt on. I Holy said, shit. I said, Maybe it's cinch. Oh. <laughs> He's going westbound, westbound on 480. I, I got With no helmet on. No helmet. Oh, I got man. on my goddamn Triumph this morning, yeah. piled on my shit. And I rode about two miles. And I was like, eh. But I turned around and fucking went back and it got my car. It, no, it turn the heat it. on. Uh, fuck that, dude. <laughs> it is fucking cold. And I mean, it's one of those things that it is, you know, it's going to warm up next week. Hey, at school, you know, we're, we're going to be getting back up into the 60s. And, but, but straight up, I had to ride a bike, a couple of bikes today for winter prep because we're going to talk about like winter prep. We've been doing a lot of it here at the shop. And I'm going to say that we've had probably 15 phone calls a day for people asking about winter prep, you know, specifically what the fuck do I do to prepare myself for winter? Oh, that's nice. And so we're going to find out a little bit about that. Give me a second. Uh, You guys entertain yourselves. I'm going to go uh, grab a glass. If somebody wants to read a joke, Chris Smith. Oh yeah. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to go get, I'm going to go uh, avail myself of a vessel. I had a, just a quick joke while you're coming up. Yeah, go, go. Joke just to warm them up. Yeah. What was it? Uh, oh, what was the one I said? I said that through the text message. What, uh, what could a chicken do that Chris Smith can't? <laughs> Pick up corn with his pecker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll never forget my granddad's last words just before he died. Are you still holding the ladder? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever hear the greatest joke in the world? So, like, there was a queen or something talking to Winston Churchill. And she was like, sir, if you were my husband, I'd poison your coffee. And quickly he turned and said, and madam, I would drink that coffee. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty good. So two hunters are in the woods. One of them collapses. His hunting buddy immediately calls 911. My friend isn't breathing, he shouts into the phone. What should I do? Relax, the operator tells him. I can help. First, let's make sure he's dead. <laughs> There's silence, then a gunshot. The guy gets back on the phone and says, okay, now what? <laughs> <laughs> what's, Smith, that was good. <laughs> what's yellow and can't swim? Huh. A bus full of children. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> goes dark real quick. Damn. Oh, man. All right. Did all right, Mrs. Right. Smith approve of that oh, one? Oh, my no, God. No, she hates them all. No, she can't stand them. I'm sure she's <laughs> fucking really sick of that shit. A doctor walks into a room with a dying patient and tells him, I'm sorry, but you only have 10 left. The patient asks him, 10 what? Doc, come on. Hours? Days? Weeks? The doctor calmly looks at him and says, Nine. <laughs> 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 oh, fucking A. Oh, you know what? The fuck with tech tips. <laughs> Cleveland Moto Dumb Jokes Podcast. Yeah. Uh, people I would st- sign up for that. I started crying when my dad was cutting onions. 
Onions was such a good dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So tonight on Cleveland Moto Joke Hour, <laughs> that's fucking solid. Yeah, these, are, these are just quick hitters. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Throw a couple at us. Oh, now he can. Yeah, oh, there well, we go. No, yeah, I, yeah. Got, I got 75 of them here. Oh, God. All right. Well, just, just we're going to go. When ordering food at a restaurant, I asked the waiter how they prepare their chicken. Nothing special. We just tell them they're going to die. <laughs> Say we sneak up on them. <laughs> it. All right. So here's for every year at this time of the year, we are famous or infamous for giving our winter storage tech tips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 11 fucking years. We've been giving out the same information with very few changes because honestly, it just storing a motorcycle hasn't changed a whole hell of a lot. Here at our shop, we just park offer... park your bike, forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bring it to Phil. Take it to a shop Bring it to Phil next spring. Yeah, in the yeah. Army, we called it PLL, park it, lock it, and leave it. <laughs> and that was it. Just fucking park it, lock it, and leave it. That's all we got to worry about. Definitely so. leave about a 16th a tank of gas in it. That's Ooh, always a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's uh, a very good idea. Yeah, yeah. Else? Make sure to leave just a, just a half a tank of gas in there. Cover that, it with something that can't breathe plastic. at all. Rubber. Plastic would right. be better. Rubber's yeah. better. Rubber's good. Yep. Okay. So here's what we're going to take you through. So I'm going to take you through what we're going to tell you tonight is going to be the absolute pro level top gamer. You get an A on your goddamn report card. Best way to store a fucking motorcycle. And then what about after you do that? Right. We go through everybody and everybody drops one more of their favorite things. Yeah. yeah. And whoever is the winner is cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I really would like to just blow through this quick because I yeah. really want to talk about the 350 thing. Oh, okay. We can. We can. Yeah, we'll do both of them. Okay. So step one. I'd rather just tell jokes on it. I know you would. Yeah, you'd <laughs> much, much rather just tell jokes. You and so, Cam can go and open up on a fucking Tuesday. At don't talk about Cam opening up. <laughs> 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 so the first thing that anybody should do when they're talking about storing their motorcycle is uh, stop putting ethanol in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a real good place to start is well before you fucking store the bike, which would be like, if you know, okay, uh, it's October, it's November as it is now, and you think, okay, the you know, the clock on the wall has frozen hands. If Mickey's wearing thicker gloves, if Mickey's in a parka, it might be time to put different gas in your bike. So, hey, hey Phil, yeah, I just bought my first bike yeah. three months ago. Yep. What is non alpha exactly gas? Right. So, gasoline contains ethanol. Mm -hmm. Most gas that you buy in the United States of America has ethanol in it. Otherwise known as alcohol. Alcohol. Thank Except you. Except Nebraska. Well, and again. I found that out. Right. Right. That's exactly it. So corn is been identified as being an excellent, affordable substitute for gasoline. And you can only put so much of it in before the vehicles start running like shit. Mm -hmm. But as we all know, and if you've ever listened to our podcast for longer than nine seconds, ethanol, you know, alcohol is hygroscopic and hygroscopic means that it actually brings water in. So uh, it is a very, very big deal to have fuel in your bike that d is not a magnet for moisture. Because if you leave, uh, if you leave gasoline that you bought at the pump down there and it has 10% ethanol in it, which pretty much every pump that you buy, if, unless it specifically tells you it doesn't have ethanol in it, uh, it will have this ethanol in it. And what you're worried about is this ingress of water. And this is a real fucking problem because when we've done this test and we've tried it here at the shop and we've taken just a glass jug, nothing fancy, a glass pitcher, and we poured half a gallon of gas in a glass pitcher, what happened is in a remarkably short period of time, within a few days, we had so much water in that bottom of that pitcher that you could see the phase separation between the water and the fuel. Okay. And fuel is obviously lighter than yes. water. So the problem is the gas, the fuel part of the business goes to the top. Okay. And I'm going to pull up a picture of it here shortly to show you guys what it looks like, even in a small quantity and how much can happen over a very short period of time and why it should scare the piss out of you. Because <laughs> if you look at that urine sample that's up there, okay, that's how much water is on the bottom. So the gasoline's on the top. When it was originally poured in, yeah. the gas just went to the bottom line, right? Well, when it was originally poured in, it was all gas. No, but, but I'm saying a mixture. Like, but gas evaporates. Oh. 
Okay. Okay. So the moisture in the air gets pulled into the amount of fuel you have Mm. and it separates and you end up with what you see there in the image, which is water at the bottom. Okay. Alcohol in it. Yeah. Yeah. So what you get at the bottom is you get phase separation in the whole bottom. Now, here's because that's a, they talked about how to make your own uh, a, a non-ethanol gas by pouring water into it. Yep. You pour water into it, yep. the water grabs mm-hmm. all the alcohol out yep. of the fuel yep. and settles to the bottom. But I got a bad news for you. Okay. When you've done that, you end up with gasoline because what you'll do now is now that you have the water at the bottom, the up. water has trapped the ga- the alpha ethanol. You now drain off the bottom. Now, the gas that's left in the top has a problem. The alcohol is an octane modifier. So when you take the alcohol away, you're not, you're no longer have 87 octane gas. You have 83 octane gas. Hmm. So you now need to replace that with an octane enhancer. Shit, you are walking backwards so fast you can pass yourself. You can okay? boost the octane, though. Yep. By vaporizing the water you took out of it and spraying it into your intake. Again, <laughs> right. Can you afford to do that, right? Can you afford to, to run that experiment in real time? Go ahead, Dan. I just wanted to say be careful out there. This summer in Wisconsin, I saw 15% yep. ethanol, 87 octane. Yep. Wow. Yeah. But uh, the flip side of that is Wisconsin seems to have uh, wreck gas on a lot of their right. pumps. And that's yeah. the biggest thing. So when, when we talk about moisture... Uh, as a result of ethanol, if I were to walk up to you and you, you know, you have a gallon of gasoline, it's 126 ounces of gasoline. Okay. 10% of that gasoline is ethanol. That's 12.6 ounces. Ethanol can carry up to 50% of its own mass in water. That's six ounces. If I were to walk up to your motorcycle and pour six ounces of water into your gas tank, you'd fucking punch me. Right. And I would deserve it. But when you put, E10, you put ethanol, you know, 10% ethanol fuel or even worse, E85, 15% ethanol fuel, and you're not tuned to run on it, then guess what? You're going to be bringing in that moisture in as little as 14 to, 14 to 30 days. <laughs> so here at the shop, when we checked for phase separation, we saw phase separation happening in as little as 15 days. Wow. So that tells you that when you have a product like stable and stable, then doubles they advertise that they double the lifespan of your fuel congratulations you've gone from 15 days to 30 days right are you going to be parking your bike longer than 30 days then stable might not be the right product for you you know you know i was i've been going over to the property and everything and yep. firing up my bike yep. my ssr, your SSR. Yeah, yeah. you guys might be due for a visit from old man carb cleaner yeah, yeah. yeah. you're yeah. not kidding i'm gonna yeah. have to head out soon leaving them sit all right so that part of it just that part of it alone so here's the resource we're going to provide for you guys so the first things first about storing your bike is to get the fucking ethanol out of it so getting the ethanol out of it the best way you can do that now, a lot of motorcycles these days are not really easy to drain the gas tank on, or they're not really easy to drain the carburetors, the fuel injectors, and stuff like that. So the solution might actually be, in your particular world, might be to go run your gas tank down to fucking empty. Like, run it down low. Or run it down. if you have to. You know, but the point is, we're talking lowest common denominator here, right? I'm talking to the true fucking, I just bought a motorcycle people. Right. So take your motorcycle out and just run it down till it says E. Right. Run it down to where you can switch it to reserve and then run it for another five or 10 miles. Then go to www.puregas.org. OK, so there it is. It's up on the thing right now. And puregas.org is a place that lists all of the places near you. And you it asks you to put your state in and you can put your state in. And then it will tell you in your state where you can find gas stations that are selling pure gas. No gasoline that contains no ethanol. Go ahead. Do not be scared. Yep. When you get to the gas station, it's shady as fuck. <laughs> and it's in the middle of fucking nowhere. For some reason, yeah. all the places, except for marinas that have this gas, right. they're never a nice, shiny, new gas station. Yeah. No, they're, that's not true. The place, well, I, yeah, the place I go true. out by the Strongsville Mall right. is yeah. It's real nice. Okay. Yeah. So there's yeah. one. Yep. That's a good place. I've been like on Clark Avenue yep. trying to search this stuff down, and there's like three people that could yeah, snipe. Yeah, Cuyahoga like, Landmark over there on uh, Prospect and so, Strongsville has that. Yeah, too. There's, so, one, there's this one gas station that's called Race Fuel. Yep. Oh. That's the name of the gas station. That's the name station. of the gas station. Yep. You know what kind of fuel they have? No, no race, race fuel. fuel. No <laughs> race fuel. No. 
No, they don't have any race fuel. Their gas is all 10% or higher. Well, this place called Rain Barrel Gas, I'm not sure that place either. <laughs> they're, they're, they're too much better. Phil, let's see Wisconsin. Okay, I'll pull up Wisconsin. So I'm going to show you guys the way to use the website because the website actually is a ton of information, and I'll tell you how I almost got screwed over by using the website incorrectly. So uh, let's go to Wisconsin here. There's Wisconsin. Wisconsin. We're going, like, to, we're going into Czechoslovakia. It's like it's going a, into Wisconsin. It's West, 100%. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. It's 100%. Oh, look at that. Cow. Okay, yeah. look at Wisconsin. Because Wisconsin is a fan of wreck gas. So wreck gas is what they call RV gas or recreational vehicle fuel. It's usually 89 or 90 octane. And it's usually, well, it has no fucking ethanol. Yeah, but it has 5% cheese. So you got to yeah. worry about <laughs> is it. Isn't Wisconsin the land of a thousand lakes? Yeah. Minnesota. Minnesota. Minnesota is the land of a thousand lakes. 10,000. Yeah. Cheese, right. lead, same thing. Right. Right? Exactly. <laughs> it's all the same thing. But here's what's cool about it. So you can go to the place that's near your house, and you can zoom in on this if you need to. And so if you look on here and you're like, okay, well, I happen to live near this red dot, and I click on this red dot, here's what's fucking cool, is it tells you the name of the establishment, but more importantly, it tells you that that establishment has ethanol-free Mobile 91. Now, here's where I have to stop you guys. Because I drove my ass to North Ridgeville <laughs> to get some ethanol-free oh, gas yeah. in one of my little tiny ridiculous Japanese cars because sure. it was empty and mm -hmm. I wanted to put some gas, ethanol-free gas in it for the winter time. Sure, and I had t fifteen, like five-gallon cans of gas, empty cans, in the back of my little Japanese truck yeah. because I was going to fill up all these gas cans. Because part of our winter storage that we do here at the shop when a customer brings their bike in for winter storage is we drain the bad fuel out of it, the, the modern fuel out of it. We tell them to bring it in damn near empty. And then we put good 90 octane ethanol free fuel in it. Sure, sure. Which I normally buy at the boat dock. But I decided since I had real gas, puregas.org, I was going to go out to this shop in North Ridgeville is on my way to my other shop anyway. Just going to stop in there and pick up, you know, 100 gallons, 50 uh, fucking gallons. Right. Turns out race gas. So the pump in North Ridgeville has 105 octane race gas, which is not, which is their non-ethanol fuel. Right. So the pumps at that particular gas station, it happens to be a marathon station. They have regular 87 octane with 50 or 10% ethanol. They have 89, 91, but then over in the corner of the lot next to the kerosene pump, they've got the go faster pump, right. which is race gas, not race gas, the company race gas, the race gas, right. 104 octane, Ethanol free. There's a place right eight, by my eight dollars a gallon. Yeah, about that. There's have you ever you know the pit stop right right by uh, where I work. It's down the street on twenty. Yeah, yeah. They have like five different gases that range from ninety five to one hundred and twenty yeah. octane. Right. And they're all like it's all they're racing. all racing gases. But you have yep. to buy them in barrels. They only yeah. sell barrels. Exactly. Yeah. That's the trick. Is you, you know you can buy Cool Blue and you can buy all these different companies yeah, yeah. that make race fuel. Bell Ray makes some, and they all yeah. come in five gallon metal cans. Yep. And they're bloody expensive. Oh yeah. So. It's yeah. John's not kidding. It's like eight to 10 to 12 bucks a gallon. Yeah. On a good day. Yeah. 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 So here's what I thought was interesting. We were talking about boats. Um, yes. If you are near a marina. Okay. Th this is handy because the, when you're anywhere near, there's, you know, a marina, that's where you're going to buy your gas. And that's, and I've been doing that for a long fucking time and it works really great. So I pull up to a boat dock and that's my secret for getting a very, very good supply of uh, affordable. Well, you know, it's. You know, I wonder where they get their gas from. I bet, I, bet, I, bet, I bet local marinas are getting it from Chardon Oil. Here they are. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Probably. Because that's the one place it sells. I can go to Chardon Oil and buy two different varieties of ethanol free fuel. I love Chardon yep. Oil. Yeah. So that's a, that's a handy thing if you happen to be near a marina because boats, well, guess what? Boats tend to be old. And boats, not only are boats old, but they tend to be carbureted. And it turns out if the fuel lines or your fuel pump goes bad, you just fucking crop dusted, Chris. Yeah. Come on. I'm just going to put my nose right in my fucking bourbon. Jeez. Hey, how you Cinch, doing? Go out, go it's outside. always the sound guy. <laughs> well, now he's the fucking smell guy. So there yeah, you go. So anyway, so, I, yeah. I, you know, I even haven't been farting much lately since I don't. I know. Drink, I, I've drank the cocktails. I think it's the beer that makes the beer it. definitely. Oh, the beer makes you fart like a fiend. Yeah, it's hmm. all that great. It's all that grain. So the uh, I, again, it's not so much the smell; it's the burning of the eyes. That's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so step step one: winterize your bikes. Put fucking ethanol free fuel in it to store it. Now, if you are a super advanced player and you have pet cocks on your bike and you have drain screws on the bottom 
bottom of your carburetors. You can, in fact, drain the goddamn carburetors. Good move. You can drain the gas tank. Good move. And then you should fog it. You should fog the shit out of it. And fogging oil is this thing where you're like, hi, um, so this is advanced auto parts and I'd like to buy some fogging oil. Nope. Go to Walmart. Try to buy some fogging oil. Not going to fucking happen. All right. It's just one of those things that you're not going to find in great quantity if you're not willing to do some hunting around or looking around. If you're lazy and not creative, you can go to Amazon and buy stable brand or CRC. Now, if you're a a nerd, you know about CRC because they make all the chemical coatings. They make all your circuit board cleaners and all your contact cleaners and all that kind of cool shit. But you can buy fogging oil, even if you're stupid, you can buy fogging oil at walmart.com and at amazon.com. It's four bucks a can and fogging oil. And there's also engine store from CRC, which is also fogging oil as well. These are two products that you can absolutely spray into your fucking top end of your motor. You can spray it into your fucking intake for your carburetors. Um, you can spray it into your air box. You can spray it into your gas tank. Um, it works very well. And in fact, it is a old farmer John trick to when you're putting the bike away for bed for the winter to actually get the motor running and then shoot fogging oil down into the intakes or into the air box. Take the air filter out, spray some fogging oil down in there and actually choke the motor out on that shit. Because if you do that, then all the internals of the motor that would ever be touched by, you know, uh, fuel are now touched by fogging oil. It's a farmer's trick because they have a lot of stuff that only runs once a year. Yeah. Harvest time. Yep. Absolutely. A combine runs for like a week and yep. that's it. Yeah. Yep. And that's, and that, as far as I'm concerned, it, it's been my experience that if you're going to be a, a true pro gamer and you want to do the best for your motor, um, yeah, the right thing to do is to choke it out on fogging oil. And yep. so another tip that I learned, so like I used to be a huge proponent of buying like $8,000 with the ACF 50. Yep. And hosing yep. down every metal part that wasn't a brake, you know, brake oh, yeah, rotor yeah. on my bike oh, with yeah. it. Right. And yeah. it worked great. I it never does. had any yeah. corrosion. But you know what else works? A dollar ninety seven can of like spray lube from Walmart. Yes. So and uh, so whatever light oil you can yeah. find, it's absolutely it's fine. WD forty. Yeah. Spray your WD forty is a, a stalwart standby. It's yep. it's easy to clean up. Water the the dispersant. 40. Exactly. Yeah. It does a great job. WD forty does a beautiful job. Throw a towel over your brake calipers and yep. your brake rotors and yep. fucking hose your bike down, man. It makes all your black stuff shiny too. It does. Yeah. It looks good. Just don't put it on your seat or your tires. Right. Yeah, or, or, your or your brakes. Right. Or your brakes. Or exactly. Or your right. exhaust. Yeah. Or your yeah. Well, so, the exhaust you can, but it'll burn off if you wipe it off in the spring. Sure. Yep. So that's not a problem, especially if you have a shiny, nice exhaust. And when you've when you fogged a motor, if you fog the intake and the motor chokes out on the uh, fogging, and you want to pull the spark plugs out, and then hose the cylinders, then get you, well done. You know, mm-hmm. you, you, my, my hats off to you. You are over fucking achieving. Why can't I just run some two stroke mix through it for a little while? Well, I'm glad you asked, because <laughs> there's the weirdest thing about two stroke oil. Everywhere that you'll find two-stroke oil in your fuel, you have, if you're running 2%, let's just say 2%, which nobody runs 2%. Most people run, that's 50 to 1. Most people run 40 to 1 or 30 to 1. Extreme, that would be 3%. 25 to 1 is about 4%. And that's where a lot of people will run it. Here's the crazy thing about that. What people forget is that a two-stroke engine that 2% oil that's in your fuel is now 2% fuel that's not in your fuel. So two strokes have to be jetted different because they are running lean on fuel because there's oil where fuel used to be. So it's, uh, it seems like a small number, 4%, but 4% oil is 96% gas where 98 or 99% or 100% gas used to be. The lawnmowers work because when I run out of gas, I always throw my fucking weed whacker. Of course you do. Yeah, and it works fine. Yeah, it smokes a little, but yeah. But but again, lawnmowers, a lawnmower is the least efficient 250cc motorcycle engine you're ever going to find. Right. You know, it's a two valve side valve ridiculous motorcycle. It's, it's, when you say you've got a five horsepower Briggs motor, I'm going to ask you, tell me how many cc's that is. <laughs> it's like 200. It's 244 cc's, yeah. right? For and 212, so, I think. Right? Yeah, right? yeah. So the point being, you've got a 212, <laughs> and it puts out five whole horsepower? Right, it's true. Come on. 
Really? But and it's that's also, why they run on five-year-old gas. And it's also yeah. running at, what, 2,800 RPM? Yeah, maximum of 3,600 3, RPM. 3,600 yeah, RPM yeah, stopped yeah. out. So the whole idea is on a 200 to 250 cc motor, you're putting out between five and six horsepower. Because right. I got a six horsepower Briggs, and it's 244 cc's. Mm. That's not great power to weight ratio, but man. But it's also probably 20 years old and still works. Still works great. Yeah. Works perfect. And it's the easiest thing in the world to tune up. So if you're willing for low output, then you can have high reliability. It also consumes three-year-old gas like it's its job. <laughs> right. right. If I, Bad gas here at the shop mows my lawn. Right. right. The neighbors don't complain. The grass doesn't complain. It's fine. So that's how it works. Just, you know, just got to keep on top of things. So that's the thing about that. So yeah, fog your engine. Great. Knock that shit down. Um, also... For the tires and whatnot, yeah, everyone says, oh, well, don't store your bike, you know, on the side stand, put it on the center stand. I agree. Absolutely. It's a 700 pound vehicle sitting on two flat spots of rubber. Well, they're not flat now. They will be by the time spring rolls around. In your experience, after all these years, though, does cold affect the rubber or not? Like sitting on a cold cement floor versus a piece of wood? So like if no, you, the wood is twenty degrees. The cold cement floor is twenty degrees well, that's too. What I'm saying. Yeah, like right. I, I remember seeing all these people like like yeah. my put, grandma put, told me I get piles up. I sat on the bleachers. Right, right. Yeah. I thought well, that like, was about <laughs> drawing out the rubber where it contacts. That was the, that's, that's, that's what I'm asking. So, that was, so guys yeah. always say like put wood underneath right. your rubber tires. And that's like, so that's where I come down and be like, that's actually there's something to that. So anybody who's ever run any plumbing next to a concrete wall or mm-hmm. through a concrete wall. Like, it's a pro gamer move if you're going to run a metal pipe, right? And you're going to then put concrete around the metal pipe. The metal pipe will fail where it touches the concrete, mm. okay? Because oh, there yeah. is this reaction there, chemical, right? Yeah. So you're going to have a chemical reaction right there. But the wood pipe won't fail. Exactly. The wood pipe is going to be fine. And the idea being that that concrete is going to leach moisture and pull moisture all the time. Plus it also has a galvanic action due to concrete being essentially corrosive. Yeah, right. Um, if you've ever done any concrete work yeah. in your yard, <laughs> you'll know, don't get it on you. Right. I still have no feeling in my finger. Yeah. <laughs> it's, why is my, why are my hands so hot? Yeah. I don't understand oh, what's dude. going on. And I don't have any fingerprints. Two days later when it yeah. actually burns worse than yeah. the day what, you wash exactly. your hands, you're like, and that's, fuck, that's kind of the only argument that I've ever heard that makes sense to me about worrying about the oils and the moisture in your rubber leaking or leaching out into the concrete. Uh, that's what I actually buy. I don't buy if you put a battery on concrete, it discharges the battery. I tested so what it. What about, you yeah. know, like those yeah. rubber squares? Yeah. If you got those, they, yes. they don't they don't transfer cold. Right. So like, would that be better? So I do agree. And in my garage, I believe that putting the bikes on carpet or putting the bikes on something, you yeah. know, a flat piece of wood, what have you, yeah. is great. But another thing that I do in my garage is if the bike doesn't have a center stand, I will usually put it on a track stand. Sure. So I'll usually put it on a track stand on wood. And that's just me being a little paranoid. But again... When you have a shit ton of bikes, you get to ride each bike, maybe each bike like five hundred to a thousand miles a year if you're lucky. As Frederick Bueller said, if you have the means, if you have the I means, highly recommend yeah. it. So here's the other thing that comes down to. Last week I did oil changes on eleven bikes <laughs> that I own. Not a single one of those bikes went more than three thousand miles this year. Right. I did an oil change, a three hole oil change on my Harley Davidson one hundred three, a three hole fucking oil change. And I looked, I had 1,600 miles on the bike. Why? Well, because I don't want to park the bike all fucking winter long with nasty fucking corrosive bullshit oil in it. Well, that's what they're, I, I, I read this whole article where there yeah. was like people on both sides. And they said, why would you change oil if you're going to leave it sit there? Because anything yeah. that leaches into it. But then somebody said like, well, the reason you do that is because your oil at that point, even if you have 1,500 miles or whatever, has contaminants it all does. through it. Yeah, it does. So, and whether or not it's had 1,500 or 15,000 fucking miles on it, right. every day the temperature changes more than 20 degrees, it's got condensation. Right. You know, I mean, there's, there's, there's water on the outside of this glass mm-hmm. because what's in the glass is not the same temperature as what's outside of the glass. Right. So condensation. Then there's settled solids. Yep. So like the solids tend to settle out. And if it just happens every once in a while and they sit on the bottom, as soon as you start the bike, they'll swirl back up into the, into the oil. But if the solids settle out and sit on the bottom for long enough, they tend to stick. Yep. Right. And then you'll start the bike, and now it's stuck to something, and yep. it's not washing away like right. it did. Well, and if you're going to do all this other work to the bike, you might as well just change the oil so when spring, that first nice fucking day hits, you don't have to do shit. I got customers that change the oil in November and change the oil in April. Oh, good for them. I know. I'll take their oil. 
Exactly. Yeah, right. Right. Give me your takeout oil. I don't care. But but again, there are people, I have customers that absolutely insist on that. And they pay I change us to oil do. every other year. Right. Oh. I mean, and that's <laughs> just, speaking, just like my underwear. <laughs> speaking of oil, um, if you have a huge surplus, if you have, say, you know, like Phil, a thousand or me, 10 or whatever, mm-hmm. a lot of motorcycles and you have to change a lot of oil, do not use milk jugs. Because <laughs> they leak. I yeah. was about to take yeah, yeah, yeah. them all That's to the recycling true. thing, and I picked one up, and it just fucking poured on my driveway. <sighs> it's it sat there for about two months, and it yeah. ate through the fucking plastic. And or I'd be more inclined to believe the oil didn't eat through the plastic. Yeah. I'd be more inclined to believe the, the gasoline concrete. ate through the plastic. Okay, well, yeah. something yeah. something yeah. ate through it and yeah. fucked yeah. my whole driveway. Right. You need to yeah. get an oil burner. To I've got a milk house. jug oh. that's had oil in it for like fifteen years. Yeah. What do you? And also. Milk a milk jug. But also, I will tell you, milk jugs right. today, the milk jugs that they're selling today, every time I open up the milk jug, I'm spraying myself with milk. It's because the milk jugs are very thin and flimsy, and they're made of a oh, more yeah. recyclable yeah, this material. Is a, this is an old milk Right. The yeah, older no, milk dude. jugs, yeah. The older milk jugs, you could use them as floats to tie your boat off. I mean, to. it might have been yeah. a fly landed on it and broke it. <laughs> like, it just might have been that. I don't know. Oh, my cats have gotten really good. They watch me bring home a half a gallon of 2%. Yeah. My cats both line up because they know every time I pull that fucking lid off, <laughs> half the time it gets a nice sploosh. Yeah, which is, you know, it's great in the bedroom. It's not so great in the kitchen. The uh, So that's a big, big Splorsh. part. Splorched. Skadoosh. But when it comes to actually covering the bike up, I don't put a fucking plastic cover on it. Dust is better than rust. It is. Dust is better. You do not want to make a fucking terrarium Mm-mm. in your garage for your motorcycle to live in. I've seen perfectly good motorcycles get roached. I mean, every inch of exposed chrome Looks like a freaking saltwater science project. Even worse than that, yeah. besides chrome. So my buddy, yeah. 125 I got. I yep. bought off a guy for 700 bucks. It had 310 miles on it. He had it for one year. He bought it off you in 2000. Way to go, brag. Right? Yeah, all right. Anyways, no, but the thing is, is that he had, he had it for a year before I bought it. Yeah. And, and um, he put a cover on it, and the black painted fucking... Uh, brake levers, the levers are corroded. Ah, yeah, that's the one thing that was thing. It was the corrode because he covered it and it got fucking you know it got fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I'm, they I'm, make I'm, covers too that are made out of like Tyvek that breathes and stuff. Yeah. you might be able to get. Away well, you don't it. want if you have your bike indoors, you don't want an outdoor no. cover. On exactly, it. pretty much what it right. comes down and, to. And and here's the trick that we do: we store between twenty five and seventy five motorcycles for our customers every single year. We keep our warehouse. Um, we have overhead infrared gas heaters. We keep the warehouse, but about 50 degrees, between 50 and 55 degrees. Very, very normal. But the trick is that we have got literally bed sheets. Mm-hmm. Go through your fucking house and look at your worst bed sheets. Grab your old flannel sheets or whatever it might be. Go to the Salvation Army thrift Shear, store. Shears, shears. That what grandmas have, have all those sheer yeah. fucking... What you're trying to do is you're trying to treat to keep abrasives and stuff from falling out of your rafters and dust from accumulating on your bikes. Don't wrap it around the bottom and make an airtight seal around it. Just let the wind come and go. And then I have a fan. Actually, I actually have two fans that I keep the air moving in the warehouse. So I have one fan by the door and I have one fan by the back and it keeps the air moving in a circle. Yep. And the idea being it's not stagnant. Mm-hmm. And by keeping the air moving and keeping it 50 degrees, it's really nice. And we don't see any moisture problems. We don't see any pitting on the chrome. Uh, the bikes are happy. And that's a big deal is that that storage environment is real important. And then you got to keep the fucking insects, insects away. He used, John used to tell a joke about the decon air filters. No lie. No lie. That's like, like that is the place. If you want to know, I fucking took a car the other day out of my backyard, took it over to the garage, took it over to the shop, popped the hood. It was a fucking acorn of Palooza. <laughs> I don't know what fucking... Since we have bald eagles, we don't have too many squirrels or chipmunks anymore, mm-hmm. but they have found a safe habitat under the hood of my Mitsubishi Pajero Mini. And I'm looking in, and there's the turbo, the big intake for the intercooler, and then there's just fucking acorns and all the spark plug holes. Those little motherfuckers, man. When I bought my Hyundai, yeah. right, my, my truck died at the Hyundai dealership, so I was like, okay. And he I guess I need a Hyundai. Yeah, right. So I, I found this low mileage. It was, a whatever, 10,000 miles, whatever. Right. But it had been sitting on the lot for like eight months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he sold to me really cheap, whatever. It had a dead as body in the seat. Well, yeah. dude, as yeah. soon as I started driving it, the next day when it, I needed to put the heat on, I was like, oh, my God, I've made a horrible mistake. Yeah. The entire car smelled like piss. Yeah. Like, to the point oh, yeah. that, like, I was like, well, obviously some old lady that had you know problems just pissed herself in this car all the time. 
So after thinking about it for quite a while, I was like, you know what? Let me check the fucking cabin filter. Yep. So I pulled the fucking glove compartment out, pulled the cabin. By the time I got the fucking thing a half inch, it just poured into the car. Oh, yeah. And it was like yep. 10,000 of those yeah. fucking nuts, yeah. a bunch of fucking chewed up paper right. that was all still wet with rat piss or whatever the fuck it yep. was. So, you know, I vermin? saw the whole thing, but I can't believe they were, I don't, how do they get in there? I don't even know how you they, can prep your bike. A mouse can squeeze itself hey. down to like a quarter inch. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, they can, yeah, you know, yeah. If their skull will fit through, mm-hmm. but they them, can fit them through. tiny little fuckers will ruin your life with their piss. Oh, it yeah. smells so, so the BMW, bad, yeah. my gray BMW, if you guys remember, that's that gray colored, silver colored BMW R50 I had. Mm-hmm. When I bought that bike, that thing was in 17 boxes, right? <laughs> So when I got that bike, it was a fucking true project bike. But on the BMW motor, there's a, a, a cast cover over the airbox. So there's a cast cover and there's two snorkels that go into it from the carburetors. <laughs> so you'd think at the minimum, you know, you got to get through the carburetors. That cast airbox that's built into the motor assembly on, uh, you know, an old airhead was 100% full of mouse house. Like yeah. this place, this, this bike had must have been next to some furniture cushions or something, or like a piece of upholstered yeah, I don't know something. Where they get all that shit. But you could not they squeeze. Forge. Yeah, they forge yeah, and yeah. that's their job and that's what they do. Yeah. You couldn't squeeze anything else into the box. It was packed solid. Yeah. Five dead mice in there. Huh. So what was happening is somebody had laid out some decon like poison uh, and they were getting the poison and going back to their mouse house, which happened to be the air box of this BMW. Mm. They had filled up the air box. They had filled up the intake snorkels and they had, the valve was open. The intake valve was open on the right side. Mm. They had filled up the right side. Oh, wow. You know how small the gap is on an intake valve? Oh yeah, tiny. On a 500 cc motor? Yeah. It's fucking small. Just enough, to get, just enough say, to get in there. It's just big enough for a little tiny mouse to go in yeah. because the cylinder was ruined. The rat piss, I'm sorry, the mouse piss had taken off the lining of the cylinder. So the cylinder was completely gouged out and completely corroded oh, due to mouse piss. So if you've done all the things that we told you about, if your garage has a mouse problem, you're fucked. Yeah. It smells of rodent piss. Emma will give you $300 for it. So this... Put the bike in the, in the living room or something like I, that. You know, it's hilarious. At our, house, um, at our house, we are famous for taking one of our scooters or one of our bikes and putting it in the house for Christmas and decorating it instead of a tree. Yeah. Sure. Because trees are stupid. You know, if you bring in a real tree, that's stupid. And if you bring in a, a tree that's got a big ball of dirt on the bottom of it, that's good, cool. I guess you're going to park you, a tree in your yeah, backyard. Right, yeah. Good job. Um, I've never been baller enough to do that shit. Yeah. But if you bring in a plastic tree, well, then fuck you anyway, right? But if you dre- if you decorate your motorcycle, that's fucking cool as hell. And the ornaments look really good on it, too, by the way. You know, that's... If you can convince your significant other to let you bring a motorcycle into the house and decorate it for Christmas, yep. you or have four. unlocked a life goal. Four, one in each, one in each room because we're ballers. So you were, you were talking about the mouth, yeah. like getting like decon and bringing it yeah. back to the nest. Yeah, so, decon. I, I want to say something about decon. When, go ahead, go ahead. I, no, no, when you're done. Okay. Well, I was just going to say I, I watched this thing recently where they were talking about ants and ants. Like they have sentinels that sit outside the ant nest, and when ants come back from a mission. Like these sentinels, like Mission. sniff them out and see if they have any like spores or anything on them that could cause oh, a trouble, problem, trouble, to trouble. The nest, right? Yeah. So these fucking mushroom scientists figured out that they could create this fucking this this fungi that like would like 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 fool the fucking sentinels. Yeah. So like when these these fucking ants came up, they're covered in this fucking spores, but the right. sentinels don't sense it. Yeah. Then it gets inside there and then fucks all the ants up, like all over the place. Of course, it's fucking amazing. Hey. Mother Nature yeah. is insane. It's fucking it, again, crazy, man. It's, it's a wonder any of us survive. Yeah. Um, so if yeah, you, but the chemical industry is better. It is better. All right, so what's your decon thing? Well, just that you really can't buy a good decon no, anymore. They won't oh, let really? it. Yeah. And that yeah. what I do is go on eBay and buy the old stuff. Yep. At 20 bucks for one and a half ounces yep. is worth every penny of it, though. Yep. How, much can, how much can one and a half ounces do? It can kill every mouse that in that's the, in your in your right. house. Right. Yeah. We put I put and I incidentally I just put uh, I put one of those little triangles underneath my yep. my you know sink a year ago or mm-hmm. whatever. Never paid any attention. Haven't seen a mouse. Has right. been no mouse poop or whatever. Yep. But I went and replaced my sink and it was all gone. I'm yep. like, oh, oh yeah, it's working. Somebody ate it. Oh but, shit! But it kills them and it kills them in one feeding. Yeah. The stuff you get today, the green blocks and stuff. Yeah. They eat it. They're shitting green yep. for months. For months. Like yep. they're having babies. Like this, yep. all it does is it's a 
anticoagulant. Yep. So like it's supposed to like if they get cut or something. You got to wait for the mouse to cut himself shaving. <laughs> that almost yeah. never or happens. Get shot. Yeah. Right. Get shot. <laughs> exactly. And it, and it there just, was no like, one. Like, there was, I was one heroin mouse and he fucking died pretty that's quick. what they've always used. A lot of mouse I on mouse I wonder if it's crime. just a really low <laughs> yeah. dose of it or. No. Yeah. They changed the chemical. The chemical in the old stuff is called. Was DDT? Di- Diababol or something. Di- it's, some, it's a different orange. chemical. And it's Coumadin the, is cheap. Now here's the thing though. <laughs> and here's why. And I, if you're environmentally conscious so you're right. a wildlife lover, and you, especially if you like uh, birds of prey, the reason they got rid of it is because right. what would happen is the mouse eats the poison. Mm. Yep. If he goes outside and gets right. eaten by a bald eagle, and the bald he eagle kills the bald right. eagle. Yeah. Yeah. But meanwhile, I was going out with these. And it can kill your cat too. Yes, it can. Oh, it can absolutely. Yes. So yeah. you have to be very careful. Kill the neighbor's with it. cat. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going out with a guy from uh, you know doing exter- you know pest control and everything. That sounds plausible. He's like, my dog ate three or four of these cubes, and he's yeah. he was fine. Yeah. I'm like, well, the, I'm like, then that's not good. <laughs> then enough. we know it's not yeah. working. Yeah. That's not so good here's enough. the answer: if you aren't sure whether or not you have mice in your garage, spend twenty bucks. This is my the mechanical favorite, method. This is, is my the favorite best. thing. I okay. There's a guy that has a YouTube channel called Mousetrap Mondays. Yeah. I Watch this shit. This. It is a deep dive. You'll never thank you'll never ever like since I introduced all you listeners mm-hmm. to AVE, you can all thank me for that. AVE, I'm sure, thanks me for that. But uh, Mousetrap Mondays, for sure. Watch that channel. But these things, you basically take a five gallon pail and turns it into the last habit trail your mice in your garage will ever enjoy. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's awesome. And you can put water in it if you're a mean bastard. Um, you could put nothing in it if you want to then relocate said vermin to, uh, you know, a, a happier hunting ground or, or try to rehabilitate or rehabilitate them or try to change their ways or just fucking. I've, I've heard people I got put like How often do I have to empty it? Hoff was doing depends that. Depends on productivity, Dan. Hoff, depends on productivity. Hoff puts four or five inches of water in the bottom of a five right. gallon bucket, yeah. then dubs, uh, seeds um sunflower seeds right. over top yeah so they think it's solid they jump down there mm-hmm. and then bloop it's like quicksand yeah yeah oh he's awful so he's making it he's killing worse. the chip and he's going for chipmunks well look at oh, this well, those, this those thing guys are fucking evil this thing's magical yeah. it works uh if you don't think you have mice in your garage uh, i can tell you personally you do you do You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a garage that's located Anywhere not in your house, right. you Earth. probably have mice there. Uh, I found out we have we have two predatory cats in my house, and every once in a while, my cats will remind me that we do get the occasional mouse because my my, my cats will make a big event about uh, one got in, and yeah. we don't know how they got in. But it's funny, but because when we do find the mice, and we've got a few traps put around the house, and plus we got the two cats. Um, when we do find a mouse, we always track it back and we always be like, that son of a bitch made a hole yeah. and they make a little tiny hole. And so it is kind of like the Tom and Jerry cartoons where there is a little mouse hole somewhere. You just got to find it. I put one of these bucket traps in my garage. Night one, 29 mice. <gasps> Jesus Christ. Night one. I had been putting out the, the Acme Thunderer, you know, kill a mouse trap. I've got 17 different versions of snap a trap and everything else <laughs> in my garage. If you go in my garage, you'll see there's mouse traps all over the fucking place because my, my garage is a big garage and it's located, you know, not attached to my house. And I was catching about three a week with the traditional metal mouse traps, the regular old mouse traps. I put this thing in my garage on night number one. I had 29 fucking mice. Wow. I, I decreasing numbers until now I'll get about one mouse every week or so. Um, one will manage to work his way. And my garage is a relatively new garage, but doesn't matter. Yep. Yeah. It's not wide open. It's no. not, you know, no. My garage is tight. Like if you if you ran a proper vehicle in my garage, there's not for trash in the corner. Five hours, rags laying everywhere. You could fucking die in there. My garage is somewhat airtight, or it feels airtight. Your wife is like, when did meatloaf have tails? But it ain't fucking. I want to tell you, my garage <laughs> is not mouse proof. As nice as the Amish built my garage, that bitch is not mouse proof. I think it's impossible to a mouse proof a garage though. Right. Right. Well, I mean, this is my point. Now we worked on that Yamaha 1100 at Mid Ohio. Mm. That bike that shouldn't have possibly run. And the previous owner had put aluminum foil. I did that for you, Emma. Uh, That previous owner put aluminum foil in the tailpipes, in all the exhausts, and like had properly fucking mouse-proofed that bike. Like I was kind of impressed that that guy, before he died, he made sure that bike was winterized. Mm. And okay, 
if you don't know that your garage is 100% mouse proof, think about all the places animals could go to get into your habit trail. I mean, your Honda, because that's what it is to them. To them, it's a safe place to go away from predators where they can build a house. Right. And they don't know that, you know, it's pissing on, you off. So. They don't know on, on St. Patty's day, you're going to turn that bitch on and fuck their whole world up. I to say like when you, in the summer or spring, you go to turn your bike on. It just smells like steak. And you're nope. like, what the fuck? Uh, steak? Steak my ass. What are you talking so about? So had cooking them on the What right? kind of yeah, steak yeah. are you eating? So we did light up. I don't. So we lit up a bike in the service department not that long ago. Yeah. And uh, had no reason to think that, <laughs> you know, we were on the fucking nature channel or anything. We lit this bike up and it's <laughs> shooting fucking corn out the tailpipe, <laughs> 75 feet, <laughs> hard and fast. And the faster we rev it, the lo- the further it shoots corn. Because they had a, a tub of cracked corn oh, yeah. for the ducks. <laughs> and they had the tub of cracked corn and all the vermin took it and moved it into the airbox and moved it into the carburetors and oh, moved yeah. it, it into easy. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Wake up in the morning, have some corn. Have a snack. It's right there. <laughs> Make your life easy. You don't have to go all the way to the corn bucket. There was, there was just yeah. a thing on uh, on vintage motorcycles on, on Facebook. Yeah. This guy was like, I've, I've had vintage bikes enough long enough that I know that I have to open the air box in the spring. Yeah. Because I've never had this happen before. So he opened the air box. It yeah. looked fine. He yeah. put it back and tried to start it, and the whole thing choked up. Here, the mice has got underneath the air filter. Like, they weren't on what? top. Like, usually they were under the air filter. They, they All wow. their fucking shit came Holy from underneath. Shit. So, wow. like, when he's tried to hit start, yeah. it sucked, sucked all right into the shit. intake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So my buddy Mike, um, he, bought a, he bought a race bike from us. Uh, Mike Zerara, if you're listening, <laughs> best story about Mike Zerara, no shit, <coughs> Brooke Shields, personal assistant. Hmm. I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave that one what hanging that out there. Blue? What was it? Blue? Doesn't matter. Stop. Don't, don't blue even go any further. We're not, I'm just going to leave that out there. We're going to let that out there. Blue gum. We're going to leave that Eyebrows. out there. But Eyebrows. anyway, that, just beautiful. But anyway, Mon- but anyway, Mike, Mike got a bike from us and uh, my friend, Sam, British Sam had stored the bike in his parents, uh, in his in-laws garage. We didn't think anything of it. Was it a shed or a garage? It's a garage oh, in the Heights, like um, two blocks away from your house. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's over in the Heights and it's a race bike. Like it's a full on proper bike. Well, we're at this event, this rally, and there's this big, long fucking ramp to go up to the stage. Like where, you know, like Leonard Skinner would play <laughs> or, or somebody worse, right? Stained. Stained, exactly, right, you know, jackal. So, uh, you like that one, don't you? (laughs) I ain't jacked my lumber baby since my chain saw you. Uh, So. (laughs) How did you know that lyric? That's insane. Wow. I ain't jacked my lumber baby since my chain chain saw you. (laughs) This is the only song in the world with a chainsaw solo. If you don't like that, you're fucking dead. And they've to me. been playing the Buffalo chip for the last for 25 ever. years. They got a lot of mileage on that fucking one song, man. <laughs> yeah. And of course, right after them is stained. Right. <laughs> exactly. But and uh, then train and opening tonight. <laughs> will be. Yeah, exactly. So, but there's this long ass ramp and it started fucking pouring on our, on our rally. And so we were all like, you know, go up onto the fucking stage because mm-hmm. the stage got a nice roof over it, but it's like, it's legit 10 or 12 feet in the air. Mm-hmm. But there's this big fucking ramp, so I guess you could get stuff onto the stage. Sure, yeah. But it isn't like an OSHA ramp. <laughs> it's like a farm and fleet ramp. So it's not. It's, it's more not, like an oh shit ramp. It's yeah. an oh shit ramp. Yeah. So it's, it's made not, out of like the cheapest four by eights you could buy, and so it's four feet wide. It's eight feet long per section. Sure. It's four feet wide, eight feet long, and five, five, well, five, so this fucking ramp, because this ramp's yeah. ten, twelve feet tall, or you know, this stage is ten, twelve feet tall. That's a really long ramp. <laughs> and so I don't know if it's going to wheel up, you know, people that have special needs or whatever. They can, you know, get down and party with the rest of them. But <laughs> but a few of our fill in his wheelchair full of beer. <laughs> so a few of our people thought it'd be a good idea to ride their bikes up so their bikes wouldn't get wet. Sure. Yeah, a lot of people have bikes that have like open carbs and shit like that. They probably wooden shouldn't tires. have a lot of rain coming on them or wooden tires. <laughs> right. And so Mike decides he's going to ride his bike up this ridiculously long ramp. And he made it a good solid portion of the way. Like he made it a portion. solid 
portion of the way. Doesn't sound like you made to the it point to the where top. those of us that were on the stage were like, "You can do it!" <laughs> and he was he was ripping it. And I mean, it's a race bike, so it's all cut down and shit. It's very minimalist. Yeah. So he's like, Arr! and he goes up, and like at some point, the wet world's cheapest lumber. Because I mean, remember, this is a deluge. Yeah. His bike couldn't hook up anymore, so it was just kind of like, and he just very slowly went <laughs> off the side of the ramp. Oh, no. Now he was probably at an eight or nine feet of altitude. Sure. So when he fell, he fell down and the bike sort of fell upside down on top of him. So he was on the ground and the bike was upside down on top of him. Nice 400 pounds. Just giving you a kiss. Yeah. <laughs> well then all this corn fell out of the bike. <laughs> So not only was the poor son of a bitch upside down, he but no- he's covered in corn <laughs> because Sam's father-in-law had fucking corn in his fucking garage uh, to feed the fucking animals in Cleveland Heights. Probably why I didn't have any fucking power to get up the goddamn Well, no, ramp. because the, the whole fucking frame of the bike, uh, the airbox and everything was out in the open. It was all fine. Yeah. All the running components were fine, but it was all the middle of the bike was just full of fucking corn. pounds of fucking corn. And so when he went upside down, all the corn came out on him. Right. And he's laying on his back with his bike on top of him going, what the fuck is all this shit? And it was literally cracked corn. Speaking yeah. of bikes flying on people, so you posted the thing on the guy with the Riker or whatever yeah. murdering himself on a, a skate park. Again. Did you see the follow-up? The dirt bike. Yeah. Yeah, the dirt bike guy, epic. But the guy who kills himself on the Riker... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's just call it what it is. It's a fucking can am spider. Sure, right, whatever right. the thing is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, to this day, <laughs> I'm just gonna say that until I do not have the use of these two legs, right. I am never going to find that to be a, a reasonable, suitable alternative. No. Because in the winter. I'd ride one in the winter. It's called a snowmobile, Steve. Yeah. Oh, okay. They make them already. I know. Yeah, you're right. And they're right. amazing and they do what they do exactly well. Right. But if you took the skis off a snowmobile and put on tires, it wouldn't make it better. No. No, you're right. You're right. right. Yeah. So a snowmobile works great in the snow. I've ridden them. They're amazing. It's ridiculous how good they are. They're fun. Faster than snot. But a fucking Can-Am Riker or a Can-Am Spider? Not so fun. That's uh, Well, at least not in the skate park. Oh, no, definitely not. <laughs> what I can say is 100%, like, that is a one-star, do not recommend, would not do it again. Uh, how do you not know to let go of a throttle, though? That's he what couldn't, I want. Because he choked up too much. It's the first rule of learning how to ride. Yeah, right. That's you don't exactly choke it. up in the throttle uh, because yeah. when the bike takes off, all you're going to do is pin it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. and that is 100% exactly what it is is if you grab too much throttle. We we tell this to every customer and I had one today. Don't there it is. There it is. Check it out. Check him out. See how cool he thinks his life he's thinks he thinks he's in control of his life right now. He's like, I got this. I didn't see the one I with got him this. riding around before. Look at me. I'm cool. Oh, my God. This I is got way that shit. more. This is no big deal. I totally got this. I'm a cool guy. Yeah, check me out. Oh, he's throwing yeah, gang he's throwing signs. gang signs and shit. He's the coolest guy in the fucking skate park, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Everyone yeah. likes that guy. Everyone thinks he's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, check him out, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Watch me go, man. Do Watch it, me go. Do it, do it. I got this. Oh, shit. Yeah, I got this. Nope, I don't have this. Oh, fuck. Ah! Oh, no, I'm screwed. <laughs> oh, well. Just yeah. let it go. There you go. There you go. He ran himself over. Look at that. You hero? You're the hero of the skate park. Everyone, see those nine-year-olds are all so impressed with him right now. Nope, no, they're not at all. How nice is that kid? He picked up his hat. Oh, uh, again, I will not show that again. Thank you very much. We don't need to show it again. No. Yeah, that's it. But that, again... That was good. Yeah. But then the, the guy on the motorcycle, he launches that fucking thing. In, it was the fuck, he was trying to compete with Bezos and all the other guys <laughs> fucking trying to launch into the fucking strategy. Uh, he, Dude. I'm impressed by it, actually. The it motor, was. The I didn't think. Went, yeah. And he almost pulled it off, and then he just. He almost, then he fucked himself, yeah. Then, but then he went epic. <laughs> but if that fucker would have come seven inches to the left, he would have had a much worse day, man. You know, I, I don't think there was. I don't think there were any other videos of that particular one. Uh, and I honestly, I honestly don't know if I can find the exact, the one in question. Because oh, dude, just do skate park. Dude, do, do, <laughs> dude, dirt bike launches on skate park or something like that. Like, I found it that way. It was, it's I'm going to take a, a little quick stretch. So I'm going to let you know that when you type that into YouTube, that's 
297 videos. I'm sorry. So I don't think that Try he's Google, the... Google, because oh. it, was, it was new. It was new. <laughs> I don't think he's the only one that did a dirt no. bike in the skate park. Right? But if you do Google... Hey, let me tell you a quick relative. one. Yep. You donate one kidney, you're a hero, everybody loves you. All right. You donate 12, and all of a sudden, you're in the fire or the police department. <laughs> <laughs> you're America's most wanted Yay. at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... Again, I don't know. Um, I, dun, dun, yeah. dun, dun, not coming dun. up. Yeah, I'm just not finding that particular one. Well, our listeners are yeah. smart. They'll they find, it. find it's, it. It's out it's there on the Facey it. books. It's it's it. We don't have to he wait. He launches a bike 20 feet in the air off of a 12 foot half pipe. And After he fails himself. twice. Yeah. So fails he fails twice. twice before he actually launches it into the stratosphere. And the thing yeah. is, is the and a week kid, and a half later, the bike came down. He's got a helmet. He's got a little backpack. <laughs> Like, it's like, he's not just a total douche nozzle. He just got caught up in the moment. And it <laughs> fucked him, man. Like, well, again, getting caught up in the moment oh yeah, that's the, yeah. will fuck you every time. Yeah. Like, there is no, I mean, that that whole, hey, y'all, watch this shit. Yeah. Hold my beer and watch this. That is 100% of the time going to fuck you up. Yeah, and it did. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I, there's at no point ever have I said, again, I'm going to go back to our friend. <laughs> Moto G Pete, who saved us all from doing dumb shit that we would have actually gotten hurt doing yep. because he was willing to go ahead of us and, and really, really fuck it up. Like he legit put himself in harm's way. And I think what he's trying to do right now is he's trying to come up with a way to uh, retroactively monetize his image. Oh, I'm sure. From AMA Vintage Days. I don't know if he's going to be able to pull it off, but I think he should. Oh, definitely. Because for the if you're going to hang your dick out, do it all the time. And he totally hung his dick out. Mm -hmm. If you're going to hang your dick out that hard, you should be monetized. I think that's legit. Well, I mean, I, I don't yeah. have a problem with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so cool. Start a channel. Yeah, start a channel. <laughs> start a channel. Start getting naked everywhere. Yeah, yeah. That you know what? Just make it your thing. Mm -hmm. Just show up at random events on a scooter and do burnouts with fireworks on your helmet naked oh hey uh, so yeah. speaking of uh monetizing and yeah. stuff um thanks to all the subscribers and listeners and supporters of uh motor stories and uncle phil oh shit that's right we can now afford stamps to at least send four letters to everybody that's ever <laughs> written to us <laughs> so we are doing awesome in the that. cruel world of youtube monetization uh <laughs> yes it is absolutely true that moto stories with Unky Phil yep. has now gotten monetized. It's amazing. It is it monetized. Took us two months of fucking around with fucking YouTube because they suck dick. But but in the last week we've made enough money to send four people letters. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately. Locally. Locally. In the States. <laughs> Nobody, yeah. right? Yeah. Just common stamps, no. nothing more than anything, <laughs> and not not first class. No, no, no. This just your standard stamp. No, just a standard postage, yep. standard U.S. first class mail. Yep. We can now send you something in America. <laughs> Buying a five thousand dollars cinema camera is totally worth it. Totally worth. It. <laughs> and I will say that that the Moto Stories of Lucky Phil is the most overproduced, <laughs> the most over technical, the right. most over qualified, right. unwatched YouTube channel. <laughs> hey, we have watchers. It we is have, amazing. We have a loyal group of watchers. We do have man. a loyal group of watcher. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is fantastic. Uh, again, also zero female watchers. Yeah. Right, well, yeah. Maybe one, right? We may have one female viewer to Moto Stories. But the Moto Stories are great because you dropped three or four Moto Stories. Yeah, I had no weekend. I just no. edited it all You're weekend. Just, but they're all the spooky ones. <laughs> yeah, they are. So we did all the, the scary Moto Stories at one, like, in one go. Yeah. It was fun. It we was had a blast. Yeah. I, 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 I got super high and made the one. And I was jump scaring myself. So I figured that... Well, Barrett, that Barrett, my wife fucking hates you. <laughs> my wife hates you. Because she always watches Moto Stories. She's like, you know, this is cool. You yeah. know, she's been in Moto Story. And like, so she always watches Moto Stories. It's a big deal around our house. Like, that's sure. the YouTube channel. Yes. Like, that's TV for us. And so she's watching this thing. And you fucking jump scared her three times. <laughs> I know. It was in good. one fucking Moto Story. <laughs> and they're all like, they're all fuck you jump scares. Yeah, they're pretty it's good. It's like, <laughs> ah! And... 
Again, she's a person of a certain spirituality. Right. Jump scares are not part of her thing. <laughs> my wife doesn't watch horror films. Right. There are cartoons my wife doesn't watch. <laughs> like Archer's a little too edgy for her. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. Futurama might be a little too edgy. Oh, my goodness. So watching the Moda stories, those fucking... <laughs> oh, God. My like, wife got mad at me for the, the, the demon scream at the yeah. end. Yeah. Oh, the fuck, thing. man. <laughs> yeah, there, there are several points where... And, so Renee noticed the zombie, like the ghosts in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't notice them because I was watching them on my laptop, so oh, I couldn't yeah. see them. But then at home on the 55 inch screen, I was like, "Shit, there's yeah. fucking there's zombies ghosts back and there, sneaking uh, stuff around." Yeah, oh, yeah. it's fucking great. And yeah, then the flaming fun. pumpkin. Yeah, I like the flaming pumpkin. I'm and a everybody big fan liked of that. the eyes on the cat mask. The cat, the the, the fucking he rabbit mask. Good. Yeah, he the was... rabbit mask. <laughs> Again, that's a dollar store. Yeah. I'm going to say straight up. My that thing is fucking creepy, The fucking man. creepy bunny mask yeah. came from the fucking dollar store. Well worth all dollar. All dollar. <laughs> For the one dollar I spent on that 11 years ago. You've got $9,000 worth of fun out of it. My wife <laughs> will not be in a room where that mask is. If she goes into a room and that mask is there, she will stop everything and say, mm, -mm. You know what was Get interesting, Get rid of that though. fucking mask. The fucking... The yeah. You know, when Johnny Mac comes back in, we'll have to tell him we're done talking about the 350s. Oh, exactly. Oh, yeah, 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 Perfect. yeah. yeah. Oh, no. You missed it. Oh, shit, dude. When he comes in, yeah, we're yeah. going to do that shit. As soon as the door opens, somebody give me the high sign. No, and then yeah. you say, that was the last time we ever speak of this, whatever. But anyways, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, yeah. your fucking uh, Cenobite looking thing with the eyelids and all that. Yeah. I didn't know it weighed like 30 pounds. Like that thing's yeah. a fucking legitimate It's a head. rubber head. Yeah. I was so like, it's a latex uh, human head with chains through the eyelids. Yeah. It's like, you know, I didn't expect it. Like I was kind of, freaked that out. was not a cheap prop. <laughs> no, I was going to say like, that's some proper. Yeah. When I picked it up to put on the thing, I was like, Holy that's not, shit. A, that's not from spirit. <laughs> the thing Halloween's. real, like, what no, is this it's real thing? chain yeah. and real yeah, head. Yeah. Um, that was not from spirit, the Halloween store. No. Like that's some actual Halloween haunted house shit. Oh, it was fucking yeah. Great. I've got some weird shit at the, in my house. I mean, yeah, anyway, but that doesn't, that shouldn't surprise anybody, but the, uh, but yeah, it, it's, well, that, those videos are so fact, much fun. And, and you did such a great job. Yeah. You, you really, you committed. Like, so all this stuff only works if the host commits. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you committed. So I give you much props. Those three episodes are fucking In retrospect, hilarious. I wish I would have gone more B-movie horror host. I really, really wish I could have turned it up more because. You got plenty of time. What people don't realize is here in Cleveland, we were blessed with Goulardi. Superhost. Superhost. The Ghoul. Oh, yeah, The, the ghoul. ghoul. Yeah, yeah. So we had Ghoulardi. We had The Ghoul, yep. which was different versions. And uh, so I think I, I'm pretty sure that I, I, do you guys feel like we covered everything we could cover with the CB350? That's it. Yep. Yeah. I, I feel don't like think it's we pretty ever good. have to talk about the CB350 yeah. so I think that ever again. I feel like I don't know if we could add anything at this point. I don't think there's anybody here that could add anything more about a CB350. No, I think we're pretty good. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. we're done. That's I think it. it's Yeah, I think it's legit. Covered. I mean, I feel like we've tied it all up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's the matter? I don't understand. <laughs> So yeah, so I I did feel like and I felt like that being with with we we all grew up with the Hulahan and Big Chuck, sure, and we all grew up with with that B more B movie horror host stuff yeah. in Cleveland, and I'm obviously a big fan of Elvira and all that kind of shit. All I gotta say is yeah. a super ethnic joke, or what is it? They, a, a certain a, ethnic, certain, a certain yeah. ethnic joke. How did the certain ethnic guy break his le break his leg raking leaves? Fell out of the tree. Exactly. Right. We yeah. had that every yeah, Saturday. That was every Saturday. <laughs> we had so much of that. There was no way we could ever get away with it. And, and the ethnicity they're talking about is a bunch of hunyaks. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 And again, for all of us that grew up watching that shit, yeah. and for the people who lived across the lake in Detroit, who if they aimed their rabbit ears the right way, they could pick it up. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. For, it's not, I mean, for us to do those moto stories and to do them as creepy style, yeah. I, th I was really having a blast with it. Fun, man. But in retrospect, I only wish that I would have gone. Well, we have bigger. many holidays yeah, we coming have many, up. Oh, the Christmas moto stories. Oh, now it's got to be. We did good last year. This yeah. year has to be fucking good. Also, yeah. also, my wife had a such Ed, awkward moment. So listen, Ed, wait. This Ed Tarbush. Ed Tarbush. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so it was Podcast Halloween. It was this. Halloween, and this. Dressed up as ethnic couple came up yeah. with no children. 
to get candy. <laughs> and they were speaking with a thick accent. Right, right, right. And, everything. Yeah, right. and Peggy's like, oh, I love your outfit. You're a study baba. And they're like, oh. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if you can say that. No, right, I don't think yeah, you can say that. I get it. And the guy, they're like, well, we had study bubbas all over Parma. I grew up in Parma. And we're exactly, like, yeah. You're like, you're dressed up like the study, the study bubba. bubba. I get it, yeah. And the guy, <laughs> the <laughs> guy who was wearing the study bubba, girl, of course. opens up and was like, what the, we have a, <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, right, I, right. And then he smiled at it, and it was like, I'm like, are those fake teeth or real teeth? Because they were jacked. And it right. was like, oh, yeah. oh. I'm like, uh, and it was like, uh, Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Take your candy, get the Look, fuck man, out of here. It's Halloween. The one thing that I can tell you, uh, all of my friends who live in other places other than the United States of America, if we hang out long enough, one of them will always say, so what the fuck is it with America and Halloween? <laughs> like, why the fuck do you guys celebrate a stupid Day idea for 45 fucking days. Like you guys spend as much on Halloween as you spend on Christmas and you spend too much on Christmas. I want there to be Halloween Dude, fireworks. To your, to your thing. I don't know where. <laughs> Halloween fireworks. That's some, a great idea. Somebody told me this or I saw this, so I'm not taking credit for it, but I just remember it. <laughs> this dude was talking about how his kid doesn't have a filter. And so they were walking out of Walmart and he <laughs> comes up. And they saw this lady who was obviously like a meth head. Yeah. She had zero teeth and everything. Right. And she was like, can you spare a few bucks? I need some money. And he's like, oh, all I have was my debit card. Right. And they said, my son jacked up and said, hey, you know what you could do? She was like, what? He's like, wherever you have all the teeth that aren't in your face right now, if you put them under the pillow, the, the tooth, tooth fairy will bring you a whole money. bunch of money. Oh, and he says man. as he was walking away, his son was all proud. Like he solved the problem. And he's like, oh. Look, I gave away. You guys know. I fu- We do solid. We do Halloween solid at our house. Yeah. So I will not fucking miss Halloween. This year it was on a Sunday, yep. which means I had all day to prepare. Oh, dude, I had so a fire. And I got drinks. my fire going. Yeah. yeah, fire going, cocktails going, cocktails for the adults. Candy for the kids. I was not dressed up as a hot dog. I was dressed up as a Halloweener. A Halloweener. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and we're all like, Merritt and I are just dressed in black, like stage black, like sure. like stage hands. We're just like, we just are invisible disappearing people. Disappearing into the Disappearing back, into yeah. the background. And, you know, we got cool lighting and I got my big bone. Like, you guys saw my dog. I got this, you know, this dog that's just bones. He's a skeleton dog. Yep. And if you pet him, he barks and makes a lot of noise and shit. As he should. His name's Bruno. <laughs> Because he's an Italian greyhound. <laughs> and when he barks, you can be like, Silencio Bruno. <laughs> so the, uh, the kids will get that joke. The parents won't Tell get me it. about the drinks. So the drinks, so we did two drinks this year. So uh, we did a dark and stormy. Only because I really had, I had four bottles of spiced rum. So I had four bottles of spiced rum. And I went and grabbed a couple of bottles of ginger ale. And I was just like, we're just going to make some serviceable dark and stormies paper cups. So we did serviceable dark and stormies for the for the people walking around with the kids because again it's Halloween. Right. So we thought dark and stormies were a good idea, and then we uh, we decided that the second drink would be something that would be more basic and more simple. So I gave away seventy two seltzers. <laughs> Well just to get rid of them? Just to fucking get rid of them. <laughs> Every seltzer I had left in my van from the Denver rally, I gave away. And I had brought them out. I put them in a cooler. I didn't put any ice on them. They were just on natural. Yep. And I put them out there and I just left them there. And I said, the, the bucket of candies for the kids. And we did many, like various different mini candies, but the kids could have four or eight each, depending on their costume. Nice. Yeah, so we were doing judging. So if you had a good costume, you could have eight candies. And if you want to lo- see a 10-year-old lose his fucking mind, tell a 10-year-old he can pick eight candies. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> so, it, And then you tell his buddy he can take four. Oh, yeah. That's so great. you're like, oh, my God, that's an amazing Morty costume. You get eight. Yep. You phone that shit in. <laughs> There's four. You get four. And we did that all night long. We passed judgment on 10-year-olds. It's the best thing you can ever do in your life. Best costume of the whole fucking year for me. Yeah. I'm sitting there, and I'm like five beers into my fucking hand and yeah. candy. Yeah. <laughs> two, mu- two mushrooms. And, yeah, and, and this Japanese dude shows up with this kid, and this kid's dressed like whatever, yeah. and he's dressed as Mario. But he's dressed as Japanese Mario because they invented it. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's a cool costume. He's like, what do you know about Mario? I'm like, well, I played the game. He's like, did you know that Mario is not Italian? He's no, Japanese. He's Japanese, yeah. His first name is Itsu. And I said, what? And he goes, it's a Mario. It's a Mario. <laughs> 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 
Oh, that's a fucking right. It's somebody. <laughs> he got eight, he got eight candies. He got eight, eight candies. candies. <laughs> oh fuck yeah! And my, three stars. <laughs> so had three stars. Thank you. Uh, our neighbor, which is they're, they're the beautiful quintessential perfect neighbors from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Super great people. And I heard her. I heard my neighbor, Karen, if you're listening to this podcast, I heard you do this. Karen. Karen, Karen. told a trick-or-treater that costume, The per, it was a kid, it was a teenager. They didn't dress up. They just right. showed up. They showed up like a pillowcase or whatever. And Karen's like, I'm not giving you candy. Come back with a costume. When I was a kid, we would like go as a hobo or something and like put charcoal on your face and then come back. And I was like, when you were a kid, they... You're not that old. They didn't have fucking charcoal. Like <laughs> you didn't like grab a charcoal, like a piece of fucking, you know, ash out of the fireplace right. or something. Go get some cinders. Right. Go put cinders on your face. I'm like, I know it's Pittsburgh, but it's not another fucking, right. you know, era. So, so she's like, she told a, a girl to come back with a costume and she'd give her candy. Oh my God. And I was like, that's hard. I the mean, she went to the, smart, though. Yeah, she went to the effort to trick or treat and shit. I don't give a fuck. She I'm should giving, have been like, I'm only five. This is my costume. This is my costume. <laughs> I'm 73. Yeah. Right. I'm just happy yeah. at the innocence of it. I don't care if you're a teenager. Yeah. I don't, I don't give a adult. shit. Jesus, yeah. There you go. Take the candy. Oh, all the parents that showed up with their kids. I was so happy. And we had a very small number this year. Like last year, we had like over 100 people. Like, did people drive or do they walk? They walk. We had nobody in drives. Cleveland fucking Heights. Yeah, where you just, everybody's just fucking the it's heights. right there. Yeah. People were just driving up and their kids would get out of a fucking car. And Again, I'm like, are you kidding uh, me? No, not we, where I live. Living we in get the minivans so. all, uh, like, like the minivans really? just dumping out. Get the fuck out of here. Our street's kind of hot. Yeah, I know. I know your, your street's a really good street to trick or treat on. Yeah, yeah. go all out and stuff. Yeah, my street, because we're, we're kind of right by the lake and so it's a quiet street. And so that's why we always have a fire there to draw people in. Right. So yeah. that when people are walking by, they're like, oh, shit, there's like something moths. happening on Herman. They, they are moths to a fucking flame. <laughs> oh, look, though, you get rewarded if you come to my house. Yeah. There's a dog or you can not. pet or well, you get four pieces or you um, never leave. One of the things. So we had some <laughs> some kids that were like between nine and 11 years old who hit my house like three times. Sure. And uh, so the kid came by and he was a good costume. And uh, Master Chief thing going on is pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. And he showed up and I gave him eight pieces and he showed up again with his buddies. And I was like, oh, yeah. I said, Master Chief, get over here. And he's like, what? I was like, so uh, first time you came through with your brother and sister. <laughs> now you got your buddies, right? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, so check it out. I was like, Master Chief, dude, this dude rocks. He's getting eight pieces of candy. The rest of you get four each. Come over here and get four each. <laughs> and I was like, and no Snickers. No, no, no. You can't have the Snickers. And the, his buddies were all just getting super hating on him and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, Master Chief, I'm going to give you four more Snickers. <laughs> and I totally, and I was doing that because I knew he was going to come by multiple times. That kid came by a third time that night. Because, I mean, trick-or-treating is from what, like 6.30 to 7.30 or something? It's not real long. Six Six to eight? eight. And so my wife and I, we don't care. We're at like 8.30, 9 o'clock looking for drunks. Yeah. Like, we still got the fire going. It's open hours. I'm pouring drinks. We don't care. Master Chief was willing to pluck that one string guitar all night long. (laughs) Master Chief came back third round, legit, Came back and said, trick or treat, and rolled up on me, strong trick or treat. And I was like, oh, Master Chief. <laughs> there were two other Master Chiefs here this night. They were earlier than you. They were better. Yeah. Four pieces. And he's like, because he wanted to fight me on it and be like, dad, dude, I was here twice before. My cost, this is the same. I was like, no, those two previous Master Chiefs, much better costume. Yeah, 100%. 100% better costume. You only Way get four cooler pieces. Way cooler, too. Way fucking yeah. cooler. I believe that if you're, if the neighborhood kids acknowledge that you are fun at Halloween, your house won't get fucked with. Yeah, right. When we first moved in, I got a airport shuttle bus. You remember. Mm-hmm. I had that airport shuttle bus. And when we moved in, you don't want your neighbor to own an airport shuttle bus. No. Oh. So I had this airport shuttle bus in front of my house. And we got egged. Like, not that long after we moved in. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fuck, man, somebody egged my fucking house. And then I kind of was aware of it. And I hung back. And a few days later, some kids came out and pretty obviously we're going to egg my bus again. Right. And it turns out that I'm faster than I look. And I grabbed a couple of them and figured out where their parents were and all that kind of shit. But it's like, at that point, I was like, I could either be against these kids or we could befriend these kids. That's my point. Your neighbor that was like, you don't wear a costume. So you're willing to have your house fucked up over not giving away, <laughs> not giving away a twenty five cent fucking piece of candy. I know, <laughs> right? one cent yeah. piece of candy. Yeah, right, and, right, and exactly. And by the end of the night, like I had, I had easily twelve pounds of candy. 
<laughs> I think a little bit's been lost in the whole notion of trick or, or treat. treat. Exactly. Everybody's just all of a treat. Right. You don't get a treat. Oh, we used to have, to everybody would have eggs that were six weeks old back when I was Yeah, I mean, I, I think that I hands. think that toilet paper, I don't think you could oh, find yeah. toilet paper within two miles of my house <laughs> the week before Halloween. Right. We I would mean, corn houses. I don't know if what? that's just a, <laughs> Whoa, so, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, stop. You cornhole the house? Sound of brakes. <laughs> So we would go down to the feed store. Okay. And we would buy the feed corns. Yeah. So like 80 pounds of so corn? So you buy yourself a five-pound bag of feed corn. I don't okay, even know what this looks like. It's just hard corn. Is it on the cob? It's off the cob. So oh, it's off the cob. It's, so it's like pellets. It's a bag of corn, okay. rock-hard corn. You can't that you can't use, use for anything else. Deer no, corn. It's like beet, you know what I mean? So we would go. It's deer corn, yeah. And then All we'd right. run around the neighborhood. And then, like, every neighbor that we didn't like, like, Rabazzini's. Yeah, okay. And then a lot of people in our neighborhood. Rabazzini's, if you're listening. <laughs> the Rabazzini's. The Rabazzini's. The poor Rabazzini's. The fucking Fratelli's. She the was 75. Who, the old guy who, if your ball went in his yard, you're fucked. He's not letting you come get it. Yeah. Oh, but my Mrs. God. Mrs. Rabazzini would suck well. <laughs> now, let's get back to the corn. So... And then also in our neighborhood, everybody had those metal awnings. Like it's oh it's, yeah, everybody yep. had metal, yeah. metal awnings yeah. over the windows. Yeah. yeah. So we would come up, we'd roll up, would four or five deep with yep. five pounds, and we grab a hand of full card, and everybody like ready, ready, and just start whipping them at the house, and it was just like, <laughs> and so people are sitting in the house like, doo, 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 doo. holy fuck, what the fuck happened? Then we'd run. <laughs> Mr. Okay. Rabazzini is you our are attack. aware that your your corning of a house has less social impact than TP. Yeah. Because, well, like, the animals I mean, the next day are going to be did, like, we best did, night ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Yeah. We did everything. But yeah. then, too, like, we would throw so much corn that, like, the next morning, the whole front porch and, like, you yeah. just have this feed. See, corn. covered in corn. <laughs> You're just covered in corn. And, and mice. Like, what the fuck is this? I think this entire operation was set up by the lo local grain. F like, <laughs> it's the, the grain feed rate. store. I think the feed store was in on this. I, think, I don't know. I think Come on, kids, get your corn. I think Purina was all about you really want to fuck with your neighbor? Throw corn on him. So yeah. in Wisconsin, but then the cop, people would call the cops on us. So for throwing running. corn. Yeah. For is that against the house. law? Is that what law is broken it's by? It's fucking corn. organic as shit. I mean, I know. Like, what are you doing? It was just harassing people, though. These I mean, neighbors came by my house last night and fed all the birds. Yeah. <laughs> they threw food <laughs> at things. But, <laughs> in mean, Wisconsin, we would do all the other things too, like doggy bags and stuff. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when we did the toilet paper, we'd always we throw it over the telephone wires. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then light it on fire. Oh, uh, we, were trying to, we were trying to burn down the telephone line. But you know what? Shit's just changed so much. I remember being a kid, like 10, and like one of my, my roommates, or not roommates, what do you call them? Playmates, whatever you call them. The oh, kid roommate, down the playmate, street, same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Kid down the street, me would go trick-or-treating, and the motherfucker dressed like a hunter and had like a real 12-gauge, yeah. like over his shoulder. And it was no big deal. Nobody yeah. fucking called the cops yeah, or anything. Yeah, like you take your gun and just take the bolt out of it. Yeah, and whatever. Tired. I took a fucking flintlock to show and tell in first grade. <laughs> A flintlock. <laughs> flint, well, we collected guns in our house. We collected guns. I got twenty of them fucking things. Me and my and dad you built them. Walked into school. I carried it down my goddamn street because okay, <laughs> like the street, the school across the street has a line of four hundred cars. Apparently, school drop off is a thing parents hate. Yeah, but and uh, I'll be say it. I'm, I'm of a certain age. I walked to school With over a mile. Yeah, right every fucking day. Yeah. And I did this in die? first grade. You were safe? You got there? I know. This is insane. Well, the days I took a gun. Look at him. Nobody, so, yeah. nobody wanted him. <laughs> right. nobody. nobody wanted this kid. Exactly. Oh, another fucking ginger? No. So uh, He's armed. He's armed ginger. No least, soul. Least no attractive soul. thing ever, an armed Fuck ginger. Yeah. So, Wait for the next one. Yeah, I took a, I took a flintlock yeah. to first grade show and tell because I was raised around guns. Now, I was raised around guns like... Stephen Hawking kids were raised around science, sure. right? Um, guns for my household was a lifestyle. Like I did not, there was not a gun in my house that I did not know this, the, the history of. So you have yeah. experience with Flintlock firing them? More than you could ever imagine. So when I get yeah. to this new house. Now, slow down. Slow I down. Have, Let him finish up. I have, no, yeah. hold on. I have 20. Me and my dad built Kentucky Blue Rask. I have all these fucking kit guns that we made. Right. So 50, those are kit guns. So in the like 80s, the 70s ago. and 80s, yeah. kit guns were real popular yep. because it was a way you could skirt around the, the laws. Yeah. And so you could have percussion. Oh God. Man, this is turning into a really bad podcast. You could have percussion or flintlock. Yeah. Thompson, like there were all these companies that made all these hawk and rifle kits and hawk yeah, and pistol kits. Yeah, yeah. And it basically was a piece of metal, a hexagonal barrel. You had to blue it. Oh, wow. dude, it was the, the whole thing. thing. Yeah. It was a whole thing. So, so honestly, old white men could explain to their old white women that they were, it's 
It's arts and crafts, honey. I'm building yeah. a gun. It's part of American that history. Being it's my said, right to be I have arms. five rifles, yeah. four fucking like ball and thing, fucking pistols, yeah, all the, this shit. The kits and were forty nine dollars. And the cannon. Yeah. I have oh, fucking cannon. the cannon. The porch cannon. Oh, oh, oh the porch yeah. cannon. Yeah. So yeah. when you guys are ready, yeah. let's go. Let's some, oh, look at. Do believe it. me, I grew up yeah. on that garbage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was. So anyway, you're I was the only kid in middle school that made a fucking <laughs> rod, like a, a rod, yeah, like right. a straight up the rod, fucking, yeah. in middle school for my fucking shop project, <laughs> a fiberglass metal based rod. Yeah. Anyway, I, I digress. So I took this fucking flintlock to first grade show and tell because in my household that wasn't considered weird. No, it's in fact, weird. we had taken the butt stock off the the butt plate. And we had found a letter in there and currency from the Civil War. Oh, shit. Wow. Right. So that this person, it was a very common thing to behind the butt plate, put things that were important to you. So if you perished, they would make it back to your family. Wow. And so I had this authentic rifle or this authentic, authentic flintlock that I had taken in. And as a first grader, gave an entire presentation on. <laughs> so again, Mrs. Maloney, God love her. <laughs> Mrs. Maloney called my mom and said, <laughs> Despite his excellent presentation, we would like to respectfully request that Philip never bring a gun to school ever again. And my mom said, Philip did what? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, excellent presentation, well researched, completely delivered with, I mean, you guys know me. I was no different when I was six. And, but no more guns in school. <laughs> And so my mom is like, so did you do a presentation on Monday in school on a flintlock rifle? Right. And I was like, I did. <laughs> did you take in a flintlock rifle? I said, I did. did. And a powder horn and a, and a brass, because uh, we had an authentic brass Confederate uh, uh, powder, powder horn. Everything yeah. you needed to shoot one kid every 45 exactly. minutes. Exactly. <laughs> And I was so proud of myself. She goes, well, your, your, your teacher called and said she was very impressed. And I said, I was like, it's about time somebody recognized my greatness. Or something, of, something to that effect. And my mom said, you know, you're not allowed to take guns to school. News mm -hmm. to me. And I said, why the fuck not? Yeah, right. Like, why is that a problem? And she's right. like, well, because you can't take guns to school. And I was like, but... Well, it's sucks. part. It's history. It's like it's important. You're like I had walnuts and I had to smash them with uh, the fucking. No, no. What I said was I was like, it's the one thing I've been trained for. Right. It's the only <laughs> thing I'm good at. It's the only thing I'm good at. <laughs> Firearm safety. It's the only fucking thing I'm good at. You're gonna take that away from me at the age of six? <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm gonna have to sell motorcycles. <laughs> it's fucking horrible. So, John, you were talking about CB 350s before you went out before there. Before we get break. there. Before we get there, guy. Uh -oh. I'm not feeling it. Anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we covered most of it. I think we covered most yeah. of it. <laughs> but on that note. <laughs> a guy Just walks, give us one more. A guy walks with a young boy into the woods. Uh oh. The boy turns to him and says, Hey, mister, it's getting really dark. I'm scared. Hold on. Yeah. Imagine how it's going to be for me when I walk out of here later alone. Ba dum bum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When I tell that joke, it's. So this kid walks out into the woods with this clown. Because <laughs> it's always creepier if you put a clown in. Yeah, yeah. I would, clowns make everything fucking creepy. Gee, mister, it's really scary out in this dark, awful woods. Man, I'd hate to be walking home. And? Yeah. Uh, there is nothing scarier in my life than the thought of a clown riding a tricycle. Have you seen Terrifying? I got a fish that can break dance. <laughs> Okay. You can? Yeah, only for 20 seconds, though. And only once. And only yeah. once. <laughs> so speaking of, have you ever seen Terrifier? No. Please go watch Terrifier. Terrifier? Oh, yes. What's, a, I mean, what possible fucking... It's Art the Clown. Social Art the Clown is, that is fucking the man. Terrifier 2 comes out in the next couple of weeks. I saw that. Holy shit. Terrifier, Terrifier two. right? Terrifier, yeah. Terrifier 2. There's okay. a girl that gets Cinch. cut from her vaginal area whoa, to her whoa, head. Whoa, you need whoa, to sign whoa. more checks. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. But no, this guy, he's a local dude. Here's the thing. He's from Pittsburgh or that area or all right. whatever. Yeah, 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 and yeah, he yeah. completely funded Terrifier himself. And Is he the lead? No, his name's Damien oh. Leone, and he's the writer and director and... and D DP and everything. Okay. He, he hired... <laughs> DP. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 
<laughs> director of photography, thank you very oh, much. Displaced oh, oh. person, that's right. Okay, well, it could be that too. But anyways, right. so he hired professional actors, all this stuff. But Art the Clown is fucking, he's going to be, you're going to hear about Art the Clown for years. He's a scary motherfucker. So that's Art the Clown right there on the screen behind you right yeah, there. Yeah, there right? he is. That's, it. that's exactly that right. That motherfucker, he is. Yeah. That's a good fucking movie if you're into that is it. So it's called Terrifier. Yeah. Because as much as Halloween has passed, and yeah. by the time the people listen to this, Halloween will be very oh, well passed. No, this this will never get old, this movie. Really? Okay, that's good to know. I appreciate that. He turns that. a fucking dude's head into a jack-o'-lantern with the candles and everything. Right. And that's cool. There's naked people and death and fucking all <laughs> kinds of shit, dude. It's fucking... And, there's, I, and, and here's the thing. It's a throwback to the 70s and 80s. Right. Because it's really not a plot. That's there's my clown no right behind you right plot. there. That's my clown. Oh, yeah. That's Zombo the clown. Uh, so for some listeners of the podcast, we'll get know where this comes from. Oh, yeah. But Zombo, Zombo is... You know, if we have, oh, Jesus oh. Christ, Chris, <laughs> Jesus, Chris, you know, what I'm, the hell? Yeah. I think that came up on the microphone, dude. Chris, Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's fucking awful. All right, on that, I read a red guys. Ride fast, take chances, and clean the dirt out of your fucking float bowl. Yes, you're fucking asshole. Jesus Christmas. Oh my God.